Hey, everybody, tune in to Recent Tartarians. Recent Tartarians. Recent Tartarians. Yeah. Hi. Hey. How you been, David? Yeah. It's working. Yeah, the audio is great. Well, it's perfect for me, but is it recording? <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Are you sure yeah, about we're, that? We're recording for sure. Always on record. So yeah. I want to. I want to so really quickly say though, because yeah. it's been a while since we talked. And last time we talked, what you had like eight books out, and then I got a message from you. You had like fifteen books out. What is yeah, so? I've got fifteen. I'm working on the latest one called <laughs> Skull and Bones. Oh, there you go. So nothing too controversial then. All the books are controversial. Yeah. But, um, the thing is, yeah. Let's start from the beginning. This subject now has become globally known as Tartaria. Right. Yeah, yeah, I got um, now, I had many... Dugan on. Alexander Dugan was talking about Tartaria, and I know Klaus Schwab has brought it up. So it's in the mainstream. Yeah. Now, the thing is, most people don't have a look. 20 years ago, nobody had heard of this thing until a guy came along called Professor Anatoly Fomenko from Russia, from Moscow State University. He came along and he started mentioning it. And then, but what he did was he spoke about. Uh, total world history and he showed world history is a lie and from the evidence that he presented um, what he showed was this he showed that Jesus Christ probably lived around 900 years ago maximum about 1100 years ago this is what he showed and then he showed the lies in history it was very simple he he showed it mathematically they just copied it yeah and they and they used math a mathematical order to copy this history from country to country. Yes, and they put it in different timelines, extending it, repeats in history. Then his work became famous globally. <clears throat> when, it, when it became famous globally, um, many people started to take advantage of it. And then they started advertising it, mud floods, this, that, everything, free energy. And, and now it's, it's gone out there um, everywhere. But there is a lot of misinformation on purpose that we don't know, it could be organizations that are linked to historians or other people who are trying to discredit this movement. Now, one, it is not called Tartaria, this civilization. It had several names, yeah, that people will have to seriously consider. Some people call it Tartaria. Other historians called it the Kingdom of the Mongols. Yes. Now, Anatoly Fomenko showed that the Old Testament history is actually the history of Europe and Asia. And this history is exactly the same as, as European history today during the Middle Ages and the history of what they call Tartaria. So some people have started calling this the kingdom of God or the rule of Jesus Christ. Now, another thing that Anatoly Fomenko pointed out was that this history was also similar to the history of the so-called Islamic world that suddenly um, went worldwide, or these Islamic empires, after the 6th century during the Middle Ages mainly. And so some people call it the Caliphate. So really this global civilization doesn't have a name. Yeah, you can call it the Kingdom of God. You can actually call it the Kingdom of Israel that's written in the Old Testament. Or you can call it the Caliphate because it's in everybody's history. Yes? <clears throat> So, so, so um, Tartaria has just gone everywhere, but what everybody has forgotten to do is go back to the original evidence that Professor Anatoly Fomenko presented. Now, the biggest things that he presented that um, anybody can have a look at is that Jesus Christ lived around a thousand years ago. And then he showed that on average, a thousand year f years of fake history were added on. It was him who said it. And now many people are making videos, talking about it, commenting in so many groups online. But nobody is talking, where did this come from? Where is the evidence for this? If you want to see the evidence for this, it's in his books. And I've also put many of his, lots of his information and things that I've discovered myself in simple, in simple language. It's in many languages. I did it in simple language for the, for the benefit of people who don't have time to have a look deeply into history. But there is a lot of misinformation, unfortunately, lots of lies. <clears throat> yeah. So I'd, I'd read a bit of 
pan turkism or turanism i know that alexander dugan had talked about turanism and turan as this middle point because we talk about Tar also i recently was looking at P peter fleming's book tales from tartary where he ian fleming his younger brother who wrote james bond he has this note at the beginning where he says Tartary is not strictly a geographical term and more than Christendom or any more than Christendom is. Tartary is where the Tartars come from, Tuhar, Europe and Asia. And there were so many different kinds of Tartars that the name has at one point or another held good for almost all the lands outside the Great Wall okay. from the Caspian to Korea. I will make Korea. that very simple. I will make this very simple. Now, around a thousand years ago, the church and its allies invaded Europe. Mm -hmm. I call it an invasion because they went all over Europe with inquisitions. When people think of inquisition, they think of Spain. No, there were inquisitions in Scandinavia. Absolutely. Um, the church and its allies did inquisitions in Russia. They, they took confiscated every single book mm -hmm. in the Russian Empire um, in the 17th and 18th century. There were inquisitions in Germany in Holland, in England, in France, in Bohemia, Czech Republic. There was even Slovakia, Gnostic. The Gnostics had inquisitions against them waged because of yeah, the different what they did is, What they've done is they've just used complicating names. Like, for example, um, in the Middle East, they're Arabs. Mm -hmm. But what they're going to do is they're going to use words that are difficult for you to understand, saying, hey, there's this group here, that group there, this and that group. When we're talking about Iraqis, they're just Arabs. Yeah, when we're talking about Americans, it's it's going to right. be difficult. Well, that's that's why I was say. bringing up uh, pseudo Turkology because in the 19th century there was a yeah. movement that was somewhat similar, and at least it had you know the connections to Christianity and old Armenia and Istanbul and or Constantinople as this this source city connecting Damascus and where Christianity was more European. This this is origin theory that Jesus was in a European background, and but also yeah. the now Turkish where, background. Now, when people that? say it was European, mm, exactly. yeah, what Anatoly Fomenko pointed out. It was more Euro-Asian that right. he shows. Um, if we have a look at where Europe is and where is Constantinople and Moscow or Istanbul and Moscow, then it means that Europe is west from these two places. Mm. Yeah. And, and then so the, the Persians also didn't places. pronounce the R. So they talk about yeah. Tatar or Tata or Tata yeah. versus the Tartar. Now, now I, I will make it simple. It's like when you say the word Polska, it means Polish and then Ka. When you mm. say Turka, it means Tur and then Ka. When you say Turan or Medi Turan, middle of Turan, the word Turan basically means people of the Torah. Mm, interesting. Yes. So, so e eventually um, what happened is that when nationalism was created by the world order in the 19th century, what they did was they created this crazy pan Turanism and the Turkish language was invented. It's like, for example, Ben Choki Yubiliyorum Turkish Abi. Sen biliyor musun konuşmak Turkish? See? Wow. I studied Turkish. I studied Turkish. But then again, I studied um, Japanese. Watashi wa nihonji no honto desu ka? Wakarimashite. I studied Chinese too. Wakai yishu wo putu wa? Wajida nibu shangqing wo? Bugu wo meyo enti and yes. Wakai yishu wo putu wa? Wakai yishu wo putu wa? Wakai <laughs> yes, so I studied many languages because I wanted to get to the bottom of languages. But then again, so now Tataria um, is like Tar and then Tar on repeat. Mm -hmm. In yep. in ancient Iranian then, then mythology, they referred to Tur as uh, the son yeah. of the emperor Faradin. But now, now if we're going to get to mythology, that's why the thing is Anatoly Fomenko's books are important. But I made it simple. And in my new book, it's in the Renaissance book, oh. but I'm updating that. If anybody sees that online, don't buy it. It's <laughs> going to, I'm updating it in my Skulls and Bones book, which okay. is going to be ready within two weeks. Now, the thing is, what people don't realize is you can check even online, yeah, most of the world's manuscripts from the Middle Ages, yeah, are actually in places like the British British right. libraries, the British Cotton Museum Library, Codex, and or, or the National Bibliothèque de France, right. or in the Vatican Museum libraries, or in a few smaller libraries like the Clementinum Library and yeah. a few others. Now, what most people don't realize is that 
when you check, you can check and um, they can't hide it because many people remember it, especially in the Balkans, that the church and its allies did all these inquisitions and they confiscated everyone's books in the right. last four, five, six centuries. And then they rewrote history with their monks, the Jesuits and everybody else. For example, almost all the universities in Europe, especially that's west from Ukraine, all the universities in Europe were set up by the Roman Catholic Church. And um, their allies, when I say their allies, they made agreements in the 15th and 16th century with the Habsburg royal families and others who set up, eventually set up the Spanish Empire, the British Empire and the French Empire and the Dutch Empire. They made agreements to divide the world. This is not hidden. Yeah, these agreements are still available today. Now, now what they did is they went everywhere, they confiscated books. Like if you check the Indian subcontinent, which is as big as Europe, the British collected, the British, French, Spanish, and the Dutch collected all these so-called Sanskrit manuscripts, yeah, that nobody knows where they found them from. Mm. They're in two places mainly, in Varnasi, in Varnasi, in a library over there, and in Pune City near Mumbai. Now, when you check them all, you'll think, what the hell's going on? The British found all these manuscripts. Many of them, they couldn't translate them, and you'll hear, hear official stories like there's an Indian man who worked for the British colonial authorities. He found out how to translate, for example, an ancient Indian Sanskrit manuscript because he found the key in a dream. He dreamt it at night. Yes. That sounds very <laughs> This Mormon. is how they found out to translate these so-called Sanskrit documents. So when you, when you look through all of this history, you'll find that all these myths, everything, and mysteriously, we've got records of them in Latin and Greek. Yeah. And in India, they've got them in Sanskrit. Yeah. For the East, in the Middle East, um, they've got them in uh, um, Hebrew. What you can check is that Hebrew was a dead language that mysteriously came to life 2000 years later. Yeah. In the 19th century, Latin is a dead language for, since the Ro <clears throat> Roman Empire. Greek is a dead language. All these mysterious books in libraries were written in dead languages that nobody can speak. It, it's interesting how many of these books I've been looking into the British libraries and everything like Beowulf, etc. It's all we found it in the, the Shakespeare's uh, tutor brought it to the Null Codex, and then it was a 17th who, century. There was a fire. Who are and these people? Well, Ed Devere. I meant Ed Devere. How but you know do what you I mean? know Shakespeare existed? Well, they you told know, us. Ed Devere needed a fall guy. I was talking to Alexander War recently about this idea that Shakespeare is just kind of a cover story for this new language because they had to get rid of Frisian, Anglo-Frisian. The way people spoke yeah. before Shakespeare was introduced okay. was different. Okay, you can mention Shakespeare. Now, if you went to another uh, in France, they will, they will say Victor, Victor Hugo. Wherever you go, they'll right. like, mention Tolstoy in Russia. Now, yeah, the and thing is, what's up with you, Hugo? Because it's 2,400 pages of Les Miserables, and it's it's literally every everything. Is it yeah. really one guy? No. Now, the thing is, when you check most of these books, mysteriously, they're all in the hands of like what all these so-called museums mysteriously have them all. Like people mention the Babylonian Talbot, Talmud, or known as the Munich Talmud, Codex Hebraicus. Where are these books? They're in the Vatican. Where is the Mishnah Torah? It's in the British Museum. Yes. What, what the hell is it doing there? Oh, mysteriously, the Jews gave up their books and they gave it to the Vatican or to the British Museum. Yeah, so we can go through these. It's like when you go through the Portuguese Mishnah Torah, let, let, let me just mention a few very fast. Where is it in the British Museum? The, the Samaritan manuscripts, which are in uh, um, the catalogue of Hebrew, they're in the British Museum. Manuscripts, Hebrew, de Lisbon, um, British Museum. You can just go on and on. Yeah. And um, when you go through them all, you start to think, what are they all doing in the same place? Right. And you then know, there's the, the Sota Talmud, the Sota Talmud. Uh, you'll find that in the in the British Museum. Then there's um, the uh, then Nag Hammadi. You've got Hamadi. similar books like the Talmud, yeah. these Islamic books that have similar Sharia law. Yeah. You When you start looking for them, you find them in the British Museum or in the French Museum. That or the, in the Vatican the, Museum. That the Nag Hammadi didn't come out until 1945 is very telling. That we don't know anything about alternative Christian sects except for this right. book the, from 1945. When, um, now, I was, I, was, I was a crazy student when I was young. I, I ordered copies of the translation of the Nag Hammadi scrolls. 
and the Dead Sea Scrolls when I was 17, 18 years old. A professor in California called Robert Eisenman was translating these things. I went through them from that age because I thought, I want to know what's going on here. Now, I found do. something strange. Yeah. What was strange is that, um, hey, these things were mysteriously found. Yeah. At the time they set up the state of Israel to justify that the state of Israel or the ancient Israelites existed in the Middle East in that region. Yeah. So it, it, the thing is, um, Professor Anatoly Fomenko also showed it, it was just political or these manuscripts are not old at all. They're going to find more discoveries like this. <clears throat> All over the world. Same like um, they found the great statue of Buddha in Afghanistan that mysteriously the local people didn't find it. And they found it when the Americans invaded. And they say local people were involved. So it, it's like it's very suspicious history that they found the Dead Sea Scrolls and the Nag Hammadi Scrolls. And half of them don't mention the existence of Jesus Christ. Mm -hmm. In other words, it was a Jewish civilization with no Jesus, with no existence of Jesus Christ. So a lot of it is um, just political. Yes. Right. Same like um, most people have never read Josephus, but Josephus's documents mysteriously don't mention Jesus Christ. And they're from they're from around the oldest copies. They will say from the 15th or 14th century. But to me. It looks like 17th century, but I read that when I was 17, 18. Mm. Josephus um, writes Jewish antiquities and the Jewish war. Right. Yeah. Yeah. I read and, it. And, but it's I interesting to, know to not refre to reflect on Jesus. What is what is Josephus say in his history of post Roman or even just interim of, of Jesus's now, period? Now this is the thing. Now this is the thing that um, Josephus's history is similar to the Old Testament. Similar, but not the same. Now, the mysterious thing is what people don't realize is that the Bible, it starts from Adam and Eve and then mysteriously ends at Maccabees. Now, M Maccabees, some people call it apocrypha. It's removed by some churches. But mysteriously, this is the history of religion from, from Adam and Eve to Maccabees. And then mysteriously, we've got the New Testament. Now, when you go through that, yeah, what Professor Anatoly Fomenko pointed out yeah, the second biggest thing or in the top two biggest things he pointed out was that was was that he said the Quran actually says that that um, Jesus Christ. Yeah, his mother is called Mary. And then it says in another place in the same book that Mary is the sister of Aaron and the sister of Moses. Moses is the prophet. So Anatoly Fomenko, then he goes through the historical timeline and he shows that Moses lived around the same time as Jesus Christ that Jesus Christ was the successor of Moses. Now, many people don't ch um, seem to imagine, and uh, they've got some strange imagination because what historians say, they think the word Jesus comes from the word Joshua, and nobody ever checks this. You must have heard that many times, yes? Yeah, 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 Yeshua, right. Yeah, okay. Now, if, if, Je if Jesus was known as Joshua in the Middle Ages in Europe, then why is the Society of Jesus, for example, Society of Jesus, the Jesuits, why are they called in Latin Societas Esu or Isa? Oh, yeah, yes. Isa. Wow. Wow. Yeah, because in Latin oh, it's brutal. called Isa. And why, is, why do they call him Jesu? Because in, in Italian, Latin it begins with an I. Indiana Jones screams. Yes, yeah. the letter J was introduced. In okay, the, let's expand on that because I think we just both had a nice moment, but I don't know if everyone else got what that meant. So does everyone know who Esau is? Do you want to explain in the biblical sense? Ah, okay, okay. Now, now, Jesus Christ, you can check in English until the, until the 18th century was called Isu. They pronounced Isu in England. This is, you can even check on Wikipedia because uh, many people's grandparents, grandparents passed this history down. Then the letter J was introduced by, by the Jesuits and the Catholic Church. They introduced it in the 16th century, but nobody started using it until the 18th century because when you have somebody introduce it, same like they introduced passports, but half the world still doesn't use passports. Half the world's people still don't have a passport or identification right. card. It takes time. It's been a hundred years already since they invented the and, and nicknames and system. things, right? Like, because I think in like so Joseph, Jesus, Joseph in Italian, you can say Beppi, and it's like. So if do you think it's you're saying you think it's plausible that Esau, the older brother of the old the eldest son of Isaac and the older brother of Jacob, right? Jacob. 
Yeah, is, I'll, I'll get to that. Okay. I'll, I'll get excited. to it. So now the Society of Jesus is called Societas Isa. Yes, and the Muslims in the Quran actually say that Jesus is called Isa. But now the thing is, when you look at um, the Old Testament or what, what, what is known as the Tanakh, um, the Tanakh is the place where Moses, his successor, is mentioned. His successor is called, and Osa, it says that his name, his nickname is Joshua. Yes. Wow. And then there's the real so, Joshua so many, who takes over after so Moses. So Joshua's name is not even Joshua, even in the Bible, but nobody bothers to read it. But is wait, Joshua, oh, is, sorry, is Moses' Joshua Joshua, or is that not Joshua? Yeah, jo Joshua, Joshua is a nickname. It says okay. that Moses called him Joshua. That wait, was his yeah, nickname. Yeah, he, he called, called him, him Joshua. Him. That's I remember, yeah. Yeah, same like you're in America. Many people probably call you Andrew. Yeah, or they call me nicknames by accident, like Smurf or something. But America's weird. So if if <laughs> oh, Joshua a cool is a nickname, name, it's Muhammad was uh, the sweet one you were saying in our last talk. Now, now, now there's more to it. It's yeah. like um, it's a the, title. Um, if you if you go to Israel today, a very common word in Israel every few minutes is, is somebody will say, "Is the bus coming now?" He'll, they'll say, "Emet, Emet." Yes. Yeah. So the word ma means mother, and the word emet means true, true. So when you say memet, it means the mother of truth. <laughs> when you and now when you say the word emet, this is in Hebrew. Now Hebrew is a dead language, and there is no evidence that nobody ever spoke it until the late 19th century, after the 1880s. Yes. So the word emet in Arabic is Ahmed. Oh. So when you put ma means mother, Mahamed, what do you get? It means mother of sweetness or the great sweetness. Maha means great in Sanskrit as well. So it just means the great truth. Now the, now the strange thing is the Old Testament ends at Maccabees. Machabees. In Hebrew, Machabi. Yes, or Machaba means father and mother. Machaba. Yes. Now the strange thing is his story is very similar to the story of the prophet Muhammad. So it's, it, and that's where the Old Testament mysteriously ends. And you can check the duplication of this history. The Mach Machabi, it, it, in the history of Machabi is very rarely mentioned amongst Jewish communities or even in Israel in their educational curriculum. So it's like, but let me finish this, this thing about Esu. So the thing is, we know that we know that this person did exist. Now, the question of him being the son of God, um, the oldest documents that we've got of the New Testament are probably from the 15th century. And in the old, oldest documents, it says there were two men called Jesus, Jesus at, the, at the time of the crucifixion. And it says one of them is called Jesus Barabbas in the Latin, in the Latin and Greek, Greek documents. And the other man was called Jesus uh, Masih, the son of uh, Jesus the Messiah. And it says that when they when the trial happened, when the Pharisees and the kings wanted him dead, yes, um, wanted him dead. When the trial happened, these two men were inside inside the building or the court of somebody called Pontius Pilate, and whoever the whoever Judah was, yes, did not see the um, the selection of these two people. And then Pilate and his wife they didn't want Jesus the Messiah crucified. They wanted Jesus Barabbas dead. Now, Jesus Barabbas means Jesus, son of the father. Interesting. Can you believe this? On the day of the crucifixion, there's two men with the same me same name, and they look identical as well. It mentions these in the oldest written co copies of the Gospels. Nobody mentions it. Nobody bothers to go through them either. Also, now, the irony now, of Yeshua meaning salvation. Like maybe they, by saying Yeshua, maybe they meant not get, like to release, like give him salvation or something. Yeah, it, it developed many different uh, meanings. When, when it's like, um, if you're going to go from state to state, the the name um, the name um, Biden or Donald Trump it has d different meanings to different people. Some people will say this guy's the devil. He brought out vaccines. <laughs> right. This yeah, guy I mean, um, Ra, is the savior. Ra is the Donald Trump God is called the Ra savior by many people. True. Ra, <laughs> Ra means evil in Hebrew, and it's the sun god in Egypt. So it's all about which side yeah, of the line you But the thing on. is, what we have to remember is when people mention Hebrew, they keep talking about it. We can't oh, find yeah, modern the existence Hebrew. of a Hebrew, Hebrew language that was spoken until the 1880s, late 19th century. 
Well, yes. in, in that because sense, also, it's interesting that they associate Edom, like red, in with, with Esau, because red, and there's also the land of Edom, like the Edomites, so it's like southwest, it's it's basically Palestine, right? Like on the, on the, on well, the, uh, when, when you're going to say that, now this is going to really shock you, yeah? First, you mentioned Isaac and Esau, so now I'll, 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 I'll answer that. Sorry, it took me time to finish the other. The, the invention of the story of Isaac and Esau is to show the war between Jacob and Esau. And then, and then Jacob is supposed to be the, the ancestor of the Jews, and Esau is supposed to be the ancestor of, of the Christians, Esau. So this, this was a myth that was added on to the Old Testament, and the Old Testament, we can't find copies of it older than the 15th century. They're going to say there's carbon dating to date it probably 14th century, but we can't find any written copies older than that. Now, when we go back, so Jacob is supposed to be the Jews. Now, there's all these myths that are going all around the world saying Jewish banking, Jewish bank controllers. And then there's stories of Jewish rituals. The Jews are doing this. The Jews are doing that. Yeah. Now, this tradition started in the Middle Ages in Europe, Europe and Asia. So if this tradition was there, it means that something happened during the Middle Ages and um, 16th century, 17th century, that everybody is, uh, was saying Jewish bankers, Jewish moneylenders. Like the okay, end, of the, end of the period the of Maimonides and the beginning of the Jesuit banking period. Yes. Okay. Now, it, it's not very hard to see what's going on. The global money is, everybody knows, 60 to 80% of um, the world's. Um, money is controlled by the dollar. Central banks have reserves in the dollar. You can check central banks around the world. Now, you a simple investigation of the dollar, there's a pyramid and an eye. Yeah? Then when you go to the Moscow Kremlin, you'll find the same pyramid and the eye. Then when you look at the Vatican churches, for example, um, the four major churches, one of the four majors, Papal Basilica of St. Mary Major in Rome, yeah, you'll find the pyramid and the eye. The pyramid and the eye is all over the Catholic church. Yes? and uh, uh, even Orthodox churches. So th they are the people who control the dollar. Now, many people don't know what, are, what is the Inquisition. So I mentioned this before. Mm -hmm. Now, the Inquisitions mm -hmm. are controlled by, were controlled by a group of people called the Catholic Church. Now, what many people don't know is, I'll say this accurately because I don't want to make a mistake, mm -hmm. is the Inquisitions, the insignia of the Inquisitions, you can check it online, is called Exerge Domine. Domine judica cosam tuam, in Latin. Now I'll translate that mm -hmm. in simple mm -hmm. English. It means is they say it's from the from the Psalms or the Psalms in the Old Testament, but the Psalms are a forgery also. And mm -hmm. um, that mm -hmm. actually says, um, "Arise, God or Master, and judge your own cause." The word exert means get up. The word domine means Lord, but the word domine in Latin actually means master. Or the people who dominate. And then it says, arise, judica, judge your own cause. This was the Inquisition. It was, and um, the judica was a group of priests, bishops, who were killing people, burning them, burning them, saying, hey, you don't want to bow down and say that Jesus Christ is the Son of God. Burn him. Yeah. Or when they burned people, they pierced their body so that the blood came out. They collected the blood. Well, apparently what it was not even just the, the, the Muslims or Jews, but even the Gnostics, right? So if you said you believe they have yeah, this so thing, like the word Gnostics, of God, like the Bible is the word of God, but yeah. it's not just that. They're saying so now the thing Christopher's is, what letters. they did on purpose was they created the words Gnostics, heretics, because they know you're going to read it. And within a few minutes, you're going to forget. Well, the, well, okay, the now, weird thing I, is, imagine I, they're telling you, you have to believe that Paul's letters to the city of, of Corinth or Thessalonia, that those letters yeah. are the word of God. Okay. I mean, what I'm going you. to tell you is very shocking now, because I've just told you drinking blood. Yes, they were collecting the blood in these inquisitions and they were eating the meat. So now let me go through all these so-called Gnostic, Gnostics. The biggest ones are the Cathars. In um, France, the Waldensians in Germany and in Switzerland and Austria, and um, the Knights Templar in England, Holland, and Northern France. They claim and, they um, the Bogomils in the Balkans. They claim they, they led crusades they against, against the Bogomils and the Cathars. Crusades, like they did against the Muslims. So yeah, yeah, uh, they, they were killing them. It's, it's like um, invasions of Iraq, but not just invasions. They went door to door. They right. collected the books and they burnt the books. But let's have a look at. Um, who these people are. And cannibalize yes, them? I mean, wow. 
Yeah, I'm gonna I'm gonna say it very fast so that let's see if anybody dares to say something else, then bring your proof. Yeah, I got in the, the Vatican condemned these people, the Vatican wrote about their history. Now, what you can see is that the Waldensians, they call them Gnostics, heretics, Gnostics, yeah, they were just Germans. These are Germans, the ordinary people. What did they believe? They believed that Jesus Christ was a prophet. They believed that the Bible was a lie. They believed in the old law of the old world, not the new law of the New Testament or the new world or the new world order. Yes. Yeah, and they were the very suspicious of Paul. To replace the Old Testament. They, and what they believed that Jesus Christ was not the Son of God, they refused, and they refused the crucifixion. Now, you can check the Knights Templar. The Knights Templar spat on crosses, but they had a simple red cross. They, they spat on crosses of the Catholic Church. Um, they, they refused to accept the Bible. They refused to believe in the crucifixion. They refused to accept that Christ was the Son of God. Who were the Bogomils? Now, the Bogomils yeah, refused to accept anybody who will make, make laws or anything on earth. They were so popular that their movement almost took over the whole of Europe. The Cathars um, developed from them. What did they believe in? They refused to pay taxes to the Catholic Church, and they refused to work in serfdom or the fields or to fight for the church and the so-called kings that the bishops were anointing. According to them, Jesus Christ was not the Son of God. Jesus Christ was just a prophet. So when you say just a prophet like and then not Islam? crucifixion, what do they they don't what do they mean they don't they don't they believe he was crucified or didn't rise they, again? They rejected the crucifixion. The like Serbians, he never was even Croats. crucified. You're saying in their beliefs. yeah, they said he was just a man, and the, and they said this he was just a man. He had no church. He had no representative. Now what most people don't know is now going back to the Judica. This is important because now the Jews are being killed all over Europe. So the Jews are being killed. They're always being expelled. But mysteriously, they've got all this cash for banking. But they're being killed. They're being taxed heavily. So it's impossible. They were the bankers. And the church was called the Judica. The church collected the taxes. They were known as the Jews. The church, the Vatican, and their priests were called the Judica, a Jew for short. That's who they were. Like, for example, there's Professor Julie Mel from North Carolina University. She's even pointed out she looked through many, many records from the Middle Ages and she couldn't find a single one to prove that these so-called Jewish moneylenders existed in the Middle Ages or the Renaissance. And then we've got Professor Henry Atslan, yeah, who's Jewish himself um, and he's French. And he even turned out said, we can't, I can't find the existence of a Jewish religion until the Middle Ages, and it was invented. Who invented the Jewish religion? We've got a problem. Well, Even there's Anatoly an interesting... Fomenko, I was just yeah. looking at that movie with Charlton Heston, The Ten Commandments, and Yul Brenner's in it, right? And they've got a bunch of little hints to this idea that the Egyptian or Kemetic priests of Set, who Set's considered a god of the foreigners and etc., the Hicksaw connection, that there was a, this was, they brought an Arab tribe, a Semitic tribe, out of this area, and they, and they Stockholm syndrome them for 40 years and got rid of the grandparents, right? Because even okay. Moses couldn't go to okay. the new land. Okay, so far I've been talking about history to you. But now, since we last spoke, in the last five, six books that I've published, I published a book on ancient Egypt, ancient Greece, another book called Code 19. I guarantee you are going to be trying to contact me like crazy. Now, I, I'm going to tell you about the Hyksos. This is going to totally break your heart. How do we know how to translate ancient, ancient Egypt, Egyptian hieroglyphics? They say that when Napoleon Bonaparte went to Egypt on the 19th of July, 1799, 1799 they discovered the Rosetta Stone. Now Chechen Itza the pyramid, Chechen Itza in Mexico, yeah that pyramid is oriented, whoever built it, built it to face 19 degrees east from north. Now the Chechen Itza pyramid, yes let me go through it now, is based on the Mayan calendar. The Mayan calendar has got 19 months. The 19th month is the unlucky one. The pyramid don't forget is 19 degrees east from north Yes, and um, the thing is, the Mayan calendar has an error of 19 minutes. Now, let's go back to the Hyksos. Now, the Pharaoh Tutankhamun, he died at the age of 19. The person who discovered Tutankhamun's tomb, Howard Carter, he died from the curse of Tutankhamun. He died at a famous building now. This is almost like a shrine at 19 Collingham Gardens, Kensington, London. 
Yes. And the thing is, the, the Metropolitan Museum of New York has been accused of stealing 19 items from the tomb of Tutankhamun, 19 items. The mask of Tutankhamun is 19 inches deep. Are you beginning to see what I'm saying? The mummy of Tutankhamun was originally examined and completed on the 19th of November, 1925. Are you beginning to see what I'm talking about here? The Hyksos people went to, to Palestine and then to ancient Egypt in the 19th century BC. Now, when they went there, they, they built their capital um, and, and they, built, they built the city of, of Ramses, history Ramses, slaves, which is 1.9 miles wide, which is a multiple of 19. And historians say that when they, when the Hyksos went before they became slaves, they built their capital, Avaris City. And they say that Avaris is in the 19th district of ancient Egypt. And the districts were called Norms. And then they say that Ramesses II, he was from the 19th dynasty who fought uh, Moses. And then when he fought the king of the Hittites, um, they say that this is the, the first recorded documented battle in history. They say this is the battle against the Israelites or the battle of Kadesh. And they fought the king of the Hittites and he had 19 allies. The Hittites fought with 19,000 men in this battle. Ramses II, he invaded Libya. He went 190 miles into the Mediterranean coastline. Are you beginning to see what I'm talking about? Oh, wait, wait. Now, because I'm trying to make you, now my books are something else. The reason my books have gone around like fire now. Oh, Before wait, they were I got just one really quickly. History. The value of might or Oz is, or strength, is 19 in Hebrew. Oz is the Hebrew, at least in modern Hebrew. Okay. Now, 19 is actually alpha and omega. Alpha is one, omega is nine. So if you're going to talk about strength, well, Germany had its first democratic elections on the 19th of January in 1919. At that time, Germany was reorganized after World War I. It had 19 regions or 19 territorial states. And also 19, oh, I'm looking at some of the gematria, and 19 is Job, the greatly injured or great, greatly hated. You know, So Job also, an interesting connection to this idea of losing your kingdom on a bet with the devil. On a bet with the devil. Okay. Not even your bet. Uh, yeah. Yeah. So it just goes on and on. Oh, then it says World War II, 19 million women were working in the U.S. workforce at the time. The British had um, famous Spitfires. They had 19 squadrons of Spitfires. The most famous squadron was squadron number 19. Blah, blah, blah. If you yeah. go through it. So it 19 is your number for sure. You found all the 19. Oh, it's, uh, I've got it highly documented that I've pointed it out, out uh, um, in my books. But um, when you go through it, uh, it, it will actually shock you. I've sent you one book, but um, I'll send you four or five major books with this number 19. Like, for example, the Warsaw Ghetto Uprising, uprising the famous uprising Jewish revolt during World War II was on the 19th of April. It started on there. So you can go through it. The Holocaust Memorial in Berlin, 19,000 square meters. Oh, yeah. How many people? The Righteous Amongst Nations, 19,000 Holocaust helpers. Yeah. 19 million civilians died in the Soviet Union. When you go through the, the Soviet Union, the Eastern Front was 1,900 miles long. Operation Barbarossa invaded with 19 Panzer divisions. The Soviet Union had 19,000 aircraft at that time. Right, and by years. the end of 1944, 1.9 million Russians were working for Nazi Germany. Yeah, it just, it's psychologically an encompassing number, right? Because one through nine, and then 10, and then 19 to 20. Like the Mayan calendar is really, there's 20 wait, because it's zero and through wait, 19. But there's more than this. They faked the history. They've modified the history of World War II. This is what it's showing. Evidence points to that they've modified it. Like, let's go to Hiroshima and Nagasaki. Yes, Trinity test had 19 kilotons of TNT. Um, Hiroshima, Hiroshima, Hiroshima was detonated 1,900 feet above the city. Yes, 190,000 people were injured immediately. 19,000 people were, were estimated to have died within the next four months. The blood samples of 19 survivors were taken for radiation illness examined on 30th of August to 4th of September, 1945. Nagasaki produced 19 kilotons. And then they wanted to do another nuclear bomb if the Japanese didn't surrender on Tokyo on 19th of August, 1945. But that plan was scrapped. Around the time of coronavirus, 190,000 
90,000 survivors of the atomic bombs were still alive. Oh, if you went to Israel, 190,000 Holocaust survivors were still alive in Israel at the time of coronavirus. Hiroshima Peace Museum has 19,000 items. Oh, the same thing is in Chernobyl. 19 miles of exclusion zone were created for Chernobyl. 190,000 kilometers of highly, highly radioactive material was in the reactor at the time it happened. Gorbachev made his first comments on the 19th day of the disaster. I'm being serious to you. There's something more to this. Yeah. Oh, oh yeah. It, when you go through it, you'll turn around and think, what the hell is going on? The D-Day landings, 19,000 bomb tons of bombs were dropped in area north and west before the D-Day landings. 19,000 people died um, in Normandy due to the Allied bombing before the D-Day landings. 19,000 troops died during D-Day landings on 6th of June. They say, even if it's true or not, 90, 190,000 rounds of ammunition were fired from Allied warships between D-Day landings and end of 1944 to help the D-Day landings. 19,000 vehicles were taken by sea on D-Day and D-Day plus one across the in English Channel. Another 19,000 vehicles were taken by air. Oh my god. Are you beginning so, to see what I'm talking so, about? So yeah, you think that the twentieth century even not not even just the past, like the what what do you think they've changed about World War II? What they've done, 19 um is mentioned in the Quran. It, it gives you a warning and it says, look for it, and then you will know what is the truth about everything in life and the truth in history really? and the truth in death. It challenges you. This is how I found the code. September the 11th, 19th hijackers. The nine, um, they said the 9/11 commission report says 19 minutes past eight. There were reports of aircraft hij hijackings. 19 minutes past. Um, defensive action was taken by the U.S. authorities at 19 minutes past nine. 9/11 commission. They on purpose had 19 days of hearings. Yeah, 19,000 people were estimated maximum inside the twin towers. 19,000 body fragments were found after the attacks. Who the hell counted all these body fragments? Wow, I can't believe I never Are looked into the Quran's 19. This is crazy. The God's miracle of 19 in the Quran. But it's it's not it's not nothing to do with just a miracle. The Quran, many people are going beyond and they're going out of their way with mathematics. Yeah, there's like dozens the and dozens of miracle proofs on mathematical science. What? So yeah. basically no. every mathematician in ancient Sufi tradition is obsessed with the number 19. This is Far more than I expected to yeah, find. Yeah, there's number far 19. more. So now Anatoly Fomenko, he started this Tartaria movement. It's basically due to him. He's a mathematician. Now, when I re read his works, I examined it. I started reading it many, many years ago. Now, he started showing how they rearranged history and falsified it using mathematics. Now, mathematics, when you graduate, yes, you have a cube on your head. A cube and Allah is Kabbalah. Yes. Now a cube works three dimensionally. Now the flower of life has got 19, has got 19 circles. Yes. Now the flower of life actually forms a cube. That's why in Mecca, there is a cube. Now when people graduated in the middle ages and these people, the Knights Templar, the Cathars, or they've given them stra strange names. I'm going to call them the French, the English, the Germans. The local people had the same beliefs as Muslims, Mr. Usley. So nobody's going to call them Muslims. Nobody will, but it's clear that they were Muslims. In the Balkans, there were Bogomils. They got rid of them. Yeah, they killed them and they gave them these new Oh, because they're like para-Islam oh. because of the, like Song of Ronan. You've got the Templars and the, the, the Ottoman kings or whatever. They're working together. But then the, the lower people. Now, the Templars, now nobody's asking what language uh, these Templars spoke. Right. You can check it online. They allegedly spoke French, but they mysteriously spoke Arabic too. Right. Which is strange. Nobody seems to talk. In Moscow, Anatoly Fomenko, and then there's a woman called Sylvia Ivanova. I don't agree with everything that she says, because some people say that she says some things that are racist about race mixing. Yeah, but the thing is, and she talks about Sanskrit documents, which the British have compiled. But she points out that Arabic w w was a language in the Balkans. Now, I'm not sure where she's from. But the thing is, but, um, I I think, she I think sounds like from... she's from Bulgaria. Now, in Bulgaria, it is known that the education system there that they have in the Balkans um, is actually very anti-Turkish, yeah? Now, for somebody like her, from her research, to point out that Arabic was the global language, yes, was, was a major part of the global language, and um, there were other dialects. And it's known that the Inquisition was burning books, and all the books in Europe were all in Arabic. So if everybody was reading in Arabic in Europe, 
Wow. It means they must have spoken it. <laughs> nobody seems to. Nobody yeah, seems and they talk to about how in the Dark Ages sense. everyone was illiterate because new language. That makes a lot of sense. Yes, that's it. So now when we get back to the cube about 19, now the now Anatoly Fomenko got rid of the superstition of mathematics and said, here, here is charts. It's just simple maths. You don't need to be superstitious. You can have a look. They copied history. They used this mathematical timeline. They use these dates um, just to modify things. Kabbalah is nothing mysterious. It's just simple mathematics. So now when we go through 19, there's nothing mysterious. The Quran tells you and says, have a look. Have a look through it. Start with the number 19 and then have a look through the history and then you will have a look at history and you can find what is genuine and what is a lie. And you will be able to figure it out. Like when we're looking at 19 commission hearings of 9-11, 19 minutes past eight, 19 this, 19 that. Yeah, you can go through the, the full. It's like this. Um, What do the turn around say? 19,000 jobs were moved outside of New York City as a result of September 11th. 19,000 first responders and survivors of September 11th were awarded money by the September 11th Compensation Fund. World Trade Center Treatment Program provided over 19,000 medical. You have to go through each website one by one, .gov, info and all this. I went through it myself. I couldn't believe it. So that's when you figure out, hey, they're just making half this information up. The FDNY, um, Rudy Giuliani, you know, when they had the closing ceremony in Madison Square, yeah, had 19,000 people in 2002. Yeah. Who counted on? So it's like they're just giving out bogus information. Now, the Quran says that over the fire of hell, there's 19 angels. And then it says, it tells you that when you look through this number 19, you will know what is the truth in history and what is the truth about everything. And then it says, after this, you will know if the Quran is speaking the truth about history, because the Quran is telling people that the followers of Moses and the followers of Jesus Christ, that they followed exactly the same system as in the Quran. I'm not That's talking about modern Muslims because modern Muslims have something else. But when we look at the Waldensians or the, the Waldensian so-called Gnostics of Germany, yeah, they didn't believe that Jesus Christ is the son of God. They didn't believe Jesus Christ was crucified. They say the Bible was written by uh, um, um, d uh, um, people who believed in the devil and things like this. So or whatever, if, you if, know. If like Moses, yeah. okay, so if Moses comes from this Egyptian priest family, this Kemetic priest family, and then grabs this people and creates this, what do we know then about, because you've made ample, you've shown ample evidence in your books about Egypt's modern origins. A lot of the, the, architecture yes. is sort of like world fair stuff and we've seen metal bolting yes. things together yes. and yes so that. so so now for example in the vatican museum they've got these egyptian mummies there yeah now now they control the press they control historians they control scholars but one or two scholars spoke out a few years ago and they said hey these egyptian mummies they're fake yeah the the dead bodies we've tested them and it looks like they're from the 16th century and uh, the full mummy wrapping and everything was done only in the 19th century. Which is, which is yes. A, kind of so, sad because so they now lied, you but B, it's Moses terrifying. And that they, they're saying they're mummifying people in the 1600s, basically. Yeah. <laughs> That's the next level. So after the Inquisition or during oh, the Inquisition, they yeah. mummified now some you, people. Now, uh, yeah, so I, I will, I, I'll mention about ancient Egypt. Now, in, in my book, Ancient Egypt, I've written a book called Ancient Egypt that's out right now. And that mentions the number 19 in ancient Egypt. That goes through the fraud of ancient Egyptian history a lot more and the book called The Matrix. The Matrix continues that and the new book Skull and Bones. They show that there is no doubt that the civilization of ancient Egypt was during the Middle Ages. Now, if, if people don't want to read my books, you're welcome to read Anatoly Fomenko's books. He goes through it in so much detail, that hundreds and hundreds of pages. And then there's Velikovsky. He goes through this information too, and many other people. And um, they, they go through it that you can check it. And my books, you've seen, I wrote them so easily. Instead of putting references on the end, every point I make, I, I, I didn't do a screenshot because you know what they'll say, copyright infringement. I took a photograph of my computer, a photograph in my office so that nobody can say I, I, I've broken copyright laws and for a screenshot. So that's how I did the photographs so that I made it easy for, for references that people can check everything. Now, you mentioned about the churches and what is it that Moses being related to the priests and things like that. Now, nobody mentions this clearly. In the Quran, it says, 
it says that Moses is telling his people that they already were the kings, that God already made them kings and masters. Yes, in several civilizations that nobody looks at, Moses was a descendant of Abraham. Abraham destroyed a king and a civilization, and then his people took over a civilization of Nimrod. Now, they've, they've told some crazy story that Nimrod civilization is in the middle of the deserts of Iraq. Yeah, but Anatoly Fomenko has shown that this civilization was in Europe. Yes, yeah, so the thing is, mo who Moses was and um, what he had to do with the Egyptian royal family is a lot deeper. And the Hyksos story and all these things were invented because I've just given you a few 19s from ancient Egypt. But when you go um, the ancient Egypt book, I'll send you a copy. You can go through it and you will think, what the hell is this? It's even the temple dimensions, many of these fake temples are done with 19 this and 19 that. Like, for example, the Wailing Wall in Jerusalem on Temple Mount, 19 meters high. 19 Great Walls of China. 19 Towers of Moscow when there's 20. But they've made sure there's 19 because they've modified these things. So when you go through these things, you start to think, what the hell is going on here? It's actually a lot deeper. So... In my books, I've, got, I've gone through it, and um, when, you, when you go through it, you'll be totally surprised. So now that you mentioned Egypt and these high priests, yes? Now, the thing is, you, in the book, The Matrix, I've shown more information to show that Egypt was at the same time during the Middle Ages. Now, what many people don't know is that in many churches, for example, Holy Trinity Church, Ros Roswell, Northamptonshire, in the basement, there's thousands of skulls and bones. In um, Capella de Osos, in Portugal, in, in the church is decorated with skulls and bowls. Sent to Ursula Church, Colonia, Germany, a great church, our cathedral, thousands of bones. Now, I'll give you an example of what these bone stories. Now, this is going to be terrifying for many people. St. Stephen's Church in, in a village called Leuk in Switzerland, L-E-U-K, uh, is decorated with thousands of skulls and bones. That nobody knew these skulls and bones were there. It's in a village. Nobody can explain it. It was discovered after 1980. What were they doing in the basement of this church? It makes no sense. St. Bravo's Cathedral, a, a great, huge cathedral in Belgium. The walls underground are actually built and constructed with human skulls and bones. Yeah. So the thing is that the church is not what we think it is. People are talking about this so-called free energy. Tell them to study the skulls and the bones. St. Hilaire cherche Marville, France. Si vous habitez en France, moi je parle français, monsieur. Si tu veux, je parle en français. C'est pas, pas difficile pour moi. I speak <laughs> French also, monsieur. I told you I studied too many languages. So when many people speak about gamatria, etymology, the average person will study a few things. They've not gone out of their way to study many languages. Right. And the Balkans, St. Chocchi, he billiard monsieur. Billiard Musun. Ben, Ben, E, Chucky. Well, really quickly, it's interesting. I was just thinking, I'm wrapping my head more around 19, and I'm thinking about how the 19th century, or the 20th century is the 1900s, right? And through, it's very similar in the sense of the Mayan calendar. I never really considered this, but the Mayan calendar yeah, the is Mayan that calendar zero is to a fake. 19. The Mayan calendar is a fake. Wow. Now, the thing is, uh, um, I will tell you why, because most people don't realize. The thing is, you said 19th century and the year 1900. Okay, in the year 1900, there was a city. I wrote a book about this. It's called Tatar City, the book. I wrote a full book about it, yeah? Many, many people will probably think it's not important. It's in Beijing. It's in China. Now, Beijing, um, today we call it Beijing. Before it was called Peking. Now, if you look at uh, many maps from the 19th century, it's called Tatar City. This is strange. The city is actually called Tatar City. And, and um, if you check through the history of that city, Yes, the history of that city, they've modified it a lot. And there's pictures of battles, the British and the French invaded. That city fell in the year 1900. Right. This is why they decided to call, that was the last Tatar stronghold globally. Tartar and that's city. why they called, yes. Beijing, Peking, Tartar yeah. city, that makes way. Yeah, and every, now, the yeah. thing is, if we want to talk about the so-called Tataria, then we don't have to go back a thousand years ago or 500 years ago. We've got something from a hundred years ago. Now, Beijing, when you look at Tiananmen waterways, canals, and there's 19 kilometers, 19 kilometers of underground tunnels, 19 again, 
yeah, or 19 miles. I forgot if it's miles or kilometers. Yeah, you can check it out, an underground city. Now, is um, Tiananmen looks so amazing with the waterways. Nobody's asking who built mm, this. The water yeah. Uh, the thing is about Tatar City, yes, when the British and the French went there, the British army went there, but the so-called British Empire that nobody talks about, these British soldiers that went there, they were all Indians. Nobody, so to understand the new world order, everybody, oh, the India itself, when the British gave independence, it was created with 19 states, same like there's the 19 states in the Eurozone. Wow, yeah. so looking so at Britain that way is changing. Is, is, We're talking about France and the Caribbean, but yeah, India was a state and so much of South Africa, you look at J.R.R. Tolkien, the guy who translated Beowulf, he's, <laughs> he's, he's, he's a Tolkien. British guy. But he's a African British guy, yeah. So, so basically, yeah. are you saying yeah. though they were Anglo, or were they just British by being members now, of the, the empire? Is, now, the thing is, when you when you look at the first people to mention the new world order or the new system, there's two people. The Vatican insisted on the new system or the New Testament, yes, and then they wanted a new world, yes, and they made contracts with it, saying we're going to take over the world and divide it between us. And that's why there were colonial empires st that started invading Europe and attacking everywhere after the 16th century. Yes. And then the thing is, the Indian army, we don't know. They say this Indian army was controlled by the British and the French. It, it invaded Beijing and American soldiers came. Russian soldiers came. Japanese soldiers came. And Chinese soldiers who were working for the British, French, Germans. The whole world invaded Beijing in the year 1900. And the thing is, what most people don't realize is that half the people in England and other places, they didn't bother to follow this calendar that is taught in school today because many people didn't go to school in 1900 and they still lived in villages. So the thing is, after that date, we have the official calendar, 1900. They chose the number 19. That's why they called it the 19th century. Now, until you read my books, you won't believe this. Yeah. Or every single year, from the year 1900 to 1999, they chose it on purpose because they wanted to use the number 19. And now that they know that they cannot use the number 19 anymore after, after the year 2000 came, so now they found an excuse to use the number 19 everywhere. In 2019. So, so made sure uh, brutal. 2019, of course. Reset. No, COVID. Corona. Yeah, yeah that's what I mean. Yes. <laughs> so now everywhere you go, you must see the number 19. So who is they? So now I will tell you more. Then they called it this disease called Corona. And the, the word Corona actually means crown or Quran. Yes. And then they said for a protection, you wear a mask. They planned this more than 100 years ago, more than 200 years ago. Mask. Yeah, I've been noticing the mask response. thing is really, I don't know why more people mask. aren't launching on protection that. Because France, mask. remember France was like a year, wait, 2018, wait, they were arresting people this. for going to the beach wearing masks. And yeah. after that, they made everyone put them on. It's like vapor Sharia. Wait. Wait, it's because you don't know who, what this war is about. The disease is called the corona, psychologically, the Quran. And wear the mask, and people said no masks, no mosques, no oh, corona. <laughs> There's more to it. It's because when you, when you, look, at, when you look at the so Bible... Wait, wait, wait. Do you think Testament, the mask is a good thing then, or, or what? I mean, in terms of the religious aspect, should, I mean, ought we be... Why, right. What's up with the mask? I will, I will tell you now, if there is chemical weapons in the air, then a mask is a good thing. Yeah, I mean, if there's there a fire. There, I had a mask. A mask I, it was the first time I necessary. needed it. I was excited. But yeah. if, if you're, is there but a religious reason? Should you wear it? What's the religious aspects? I, I saw some books from Jesuits in the 1500s where they went to Tartary, and they show people wearing the masks. Like, they have even women in the hijabs. You know, So it, apparently it's a, yeah. it's a thing that yeah. existed. Yeah, now, I, I, um, I, now, when you look at the Jesuits went to Eastern Europe, Tartary, they claim, started after Poland. Now, the thing is, what, what Anatoly Fomenko did was this. He checked the majority of the coins in Europe and the majority of the coins in Europe, for example, Sweden, Finland, Norway, the majority of the coins, one, are Arabic. They're written in Arabic and not normal Arabic. I mean, we're using They're Arabic numbers. They're written in an Arabic so. language. Yeah, no, the words itself are written in Oh, even just beyond Arabic not using Roman numeral, they're using Arabic script too? Interesting. Yeah, yes. Yes, the full writing. And they even say there is no God but Allah. We're talking about the majority of the coins <laughs> found in Sweden, Norway, Finland, Denmark, yeah, um, Germany, Poland, Ukraine. Yeah, the so-called um, Ashkenazi Jews are Hazars 
whatever, in their territory, all the coins are in Arabic and they all say there is no God but Allah. Nobody is talking about this. So wow. if we're going to talk about Tartary, yes, the, the history that the Jesuits wrote has been falsified because they're not mentioning this. It's also interesting because like and, it, that makes Islam monotheistic, whereas Christianity and Judaism are henotheistic. They believe in there right. are other gods, right. Jude, have no other Judaism god before me. It's actually monotheistic. Now, Judaism is actually monotheistic. Well, but it Simple says it believes in other Judaism. gods you shouldn't have before you, which is to say you don't believe there aren't other gods because otherwise why would you command not to worship them? Okay, now the wording and the way the Old Testament is done, many people, even in the Jewish religion today, they've not read um, the Old Testament. Now, as I've told you, Professor Henry Atlan, he found from his research which is available, you can check it online, that Judaism was invented during and after the Middle Ages. Anatoly Fomenko showed that the Old Testament is actually the events of Europe and Asia. So if the Old Testament is the events in the history of Europe and Asia, yes, and the, of the Middle Ages, then this means the Old Testament must have been written and completed after the New Testament and after the Middle Ages and the Renaissance finished. This means Judaism as a religion could not have existed before the 15th, 16th century. Yes, we have a problem. <laughs> so everything's changed yes. and it does, it... it does sound like, because you look at these cities and these ancient cities or these world fair cities, they have this very cult, I guess you could say. There's a, there's a new religion that's being developed around it. And it seems you look at these Nordic yeah, the religions religion are based is on going Hellenism. A bit too far. For, for example, that there is many people who are now exaggerating, saying that, that, that yes, there are buildings that are buried. Some Several floods happened for different reasons, for industrial reasons, for um, land modification reasons in the last four or 500 years. There have been floods in some civilizations, but many people are, there, there was floods and other things. Many of them were due to industrial reasons and for mining. Right, yes. you look at California, so for instance, it's like the Aral Sea. It's been completely yeah. feedback looped from the lagoon yeah. area into a... Yeah, and, and the hydraulic mining in California. Turned yes, to lagoons is, is, to deserts, right. a very right. good example. And, but the thing is, uh, many people are going too far. What, like, for example, the average person, like I, I mentioned that the skulls and bones in churches, yeah? People have not studied churches and many people are just saying these buildings are energy buildings. Well, many schools, uh, um, churches have skulls and bones broken once hidden in their basements. So what type of energy are we talking about? Ghent Cathedral has got walls made of bones, right. human bones. So what is, okay, so you're writing so, a book right now with the skull and bones. What have you found? What, is, what do you think that it really comes down to? And what is the, the lore what, what does it come down to? Now, the Quran says a different story about technology. Now, the thing is, according to the history that the Jesuits have written, and they modified these Arabic documents and everything that were in Europe, yeah, there's the subject of alphabet, alchemy, yes, algebra. Yes, now alchemy is to do with, they say it's a secret science, and it's to do with separating metals. In other words, you know, what we're using to create iron oxide, to create, to create steel, etc., and they say it was a secret. The Quran says it was no secret. Now, according to official history, they say that alchemy was discovered by the Arabs and they wrote about it. That's why it's called al shemi and chemistry, and the Arabs were the masters of that. But the Quran says a different story. The Quran says God gave this information and this technology that God sent angels, whoever they were, whatever an angel is, some of them come in human form, the Quran says. And it says that God gave alchemy. Uh, and we find statues of King David in Renaissance Italy, all with Arabic writing. But the Arabic writing is not normal. It's Kufic Arabic. And the strange thing is on purpose, historians call it Kufic. And they say it came from a city called Kufa in Iraq. And this city, we can't find it to exist before the year 1900. It's an empty field with a building, that um, just one building there. So, and the word Kufic actually in modern English is cubic, cube or square, Kabbalah. Yes. So the thing is, it was a digital writing. Now, what is even stranger is this. The oldest Arabic documents and manuscripts that we can find, many of them, are written in Kufic. And the original Quran was written in Kufic. Now, Kufic actually is exactly the same like a QR code. You've seen a QR code, haven't you? Right, yes? right. Now, a QR code, they, they tell you it means Q something. I've forgotten what it stands for. 
QR, I've forgotten, but nobody wants to say it means they pretend. They pretend and say QR means, um, let's see, QR means, um, let me quickly check, quick response. But anybody who knows old world secret history will know that QR comes from the word kara. Mm. In, the, in Hebrew, kara means read. And a QR code is something that you read. The word Quran is plural for the word kura. Some of the associated Q read. with chi as well, like chi ro, kura. Yes, yes. It just means read. It's, it's interesting looking at Kufic because the, the Kufic now, Arabic, Arabic does have these Arabic... cubes. It looks very, these lines and things, it does look like a QR code. Okay, okay. Now, the strange thing is this is going to really, really, really shock you. Yeah? That this is totally going to shock you that when I first, first started studying this, I was around age 15, that I thought, what the hell is going on? Yeah? When I was around age 15, 16, I, I thought... Um, I found a copy of the Bible in um, high school, in, um, no, the Quran in the library. And then I thought, oh, I'll have a look. I'll have a look through the basic history, what language it was written in. I found that the Quran was not written, written in modern Arabic. That the Quran was originally written in, in a language called Kufic in wow. English. And is, yeah, is, so you were, Kufic. were you saying Kufic is not from Kufa, the Iraqi yeah, city? The, you can. I'll send you photographs of that city right now in the year 1900. You're going to think, what the hell? I can't find this city. It does not exist. Wow. It's on my Facebook profile, but I, I'm trying to look for it very quickly. Now, when you see this, it is totally going to make you afraid. It made me totally wor worry and totally afraid. Now, here is, you've seen what a QR code is like. Mm. Now, here, I just sent you a picture of how the Arabic Quran was written before the 15th century. The Vatican burnt all these books in Italy and in Spain. Just to quickly have a look at your messages. Have you found it? Let me jump in there real quick. When so, you look at that, it is going to totally baffle you. That, that's from the 15th century, what I've just sent you. Okay, yeah, I'm pulling it up. And yeah, it's the square Kufic. And yeah, I was looking, so if you go to Wikipedia and you look up Arabic, the first thing that comes up is some kind of Euro, Euro Spanish looking stuff, but you go to the square lying. Kufic it's, area, it all looks like QR codes. They invented the word Kufic. Say what? Yeah, they invented the word Kufic. It, it actually means cubic in English. It's a cubic language. And there's the city of Kufa in the year 1900. Nobody wow. is there. Nothing is there. Just one building. Yeah, and it's a Today, brutal, um, pretty yeah. building. It's very, it's got... Now, it looks like Agrabah in Disneyland, but then there's just this But, but we're talking about nobody lives it. there. They're telling us there was thousands of people who invented the Kufic language, which is a lie. So it's complete, Look at well, Kufar City today. You don't think it was just like wiped out? It's Iraq. <laughs> Iraq was pretty well... No, um, no, 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 no. Um, um, the thing is, what you can look at, because Iraq is, is not an urbanized nation like Western nations, you've still got many tribes who are in the villages, and they will tell you there was nobody there. Their grandparents can remember. They can remember there was nobody there. They'll say the history is a lie. It's a lie. They're saying, uh, the, you can see the difference. There is a city there today. There was nothing there before. Now let me show you um, the cube that you wear on your head. Hold on, wait, wait, really the, quickly. Um, I was reading graduate. Wikipedia, and then it says the Abbasid era, era, 749, the Abbasids attack Kufa, or they made it their capital, and then they moved their seat to Baghdad, and then they were sacked by the Karma, Karmatians, the Karmatians. Yes, in they've made all these words so difficult and everything. Now, I've just sent you two more pictures. But do you, think, do you think that it's plausible that like there was a large city that just never recovered after it's been centuries since it recovered? Well, if you're going to say that, then it's the same story that they're saying that the Mongols had a capital right. um, called Sarai Burk or Bag Sarai. Yes, yeah. in Tatar language. Turkish is similar to Tatar language. And Tatar language, Turkish is half Arabic. Yeah, Baksarai, they can't find it to exist. And they're saying the Mongols had this great empire that ruled half of Europe, half of Asia, half the world. Now, what I've shown you here is in cathedrals in Spain, what Kufic looks like. And right. then I've shown you three-dimensional Kufic. Languages have gamatria. So when you do the gamatria, it makes um, languages three-dimensional into a cube. Yes. And as you've noticed, the SWAT sticker. Yeah, yeah I, actually, if, sticker. I, when I sent that to you, I didn't even see it at first. But I was just looking at, the, and this is on Wikipedia yeah, it's Muhammad. as an example. It's Muhammad. He's the propeller. Wait, you just said the last symbol that you sent it's is Muhammad. Um, the SWAT sticker. It says Muhammad. Yeah, it actually means, yeah. Now, the thing <laughs> is, what they're telling us is Europe, yeah, 
found the swastika far away. They went all the way to Tibet, and and that's where they found. The and they swastika. never noticed the it swastika. along the walk, right? Well, and and they're trying to tell us the swastika was not in Europe in the Middle Ages. The swastika it's is everywhere. the symbol for the name Muhammad. Man, Muhammad. actually, that's Muhammad. really Muhammad. brutally interesting because when you when I went to Spain last, I was in I saw the graves, the tombs of the Queen uh, and King Ferdinand and Isabel, and laced around her coffin is just that's tons swastikas. of these little yeah little pictures of Muhammad's name. Yes, and, and do you know what nobody looks at? I've just sent you a new picture. From Spain, the Cordoba Mosque, the swastika yeah, yeah. is all over. The, uh, I, I sent you a new one. And the swastika, it is known that right. many people from Spain ran to a Morocco. It is known. Go to Morocco. The swastika stands for Mohammed. Go right. to Algeria. Yes. And they're telling us the swastika didn't re reach Europe until recently from modern Sanskrit. And nobody had heard of Sanskrit. The swastika it was in Europe. And the common people, the villagers, they love this symbol. It stood for Maha Emmet, the great truth, Muhammad. And that's why they made sure that symbol became evil. They created Hitler and his gang. They controlled everything. They, they destroyed that symbol. Yes. Right. I'm looking so for something to send you really quickly, actually. I'm going to put in your list. And, they, is... and not only that, the swastika language in Kufic was, uh, was on the guns of the Holy Roman Emperors until the Habsburgs or Habsburgs took over the Holy Roman Empire. Yes. I'm looking for, there's a so the Chiro Gamay. Yes, in Germany. It, it was the language and all the so, um, the swords of um, these German soldiers, the Venetian soldiers, that you can see were actually in Arabic. What what have you sent, Nate? I'm just sending you a science article. So I've got, when I was in school, they were using, they were calling it the Gamadian instead. And essentially they're using it as a photon turbine because it's the perfect propeller shape. And they were doing tons of studies on how you can make these little photoactive turbines that are in the shape of Muhammad's name. So it was making it was making rounds, but you couldn't call it what it was, right? So they had to call it the Greek name, which is the Gamadian. But yeah. it's, it's amazing because yeah. it's one of those things they had to get over because yeah. it's scientifically useful. Yeah. Now that you mentioned all these Gnostics, they've given these strange names on purpose. It's just normal German people. That they were killing and all their bones. You can find them under St. Stephen's Cathedral in Vienna. You can find them throughout Bohemia, throughout Germany, in these strange churches. It's in my new book, Skulls and Bones, and more details are in all the other books as well. Yeah, what you will find is that, uh, hey, the Holy Roman Emperors, they used Kufic, cubic writing on their clothes. And the swat sticker in cubic means Muhammad. And in Germany, the whole Holy Roman Germanic Empress, Charlemagne and the rest of them, yes, they used Kufic. And if anybody is trying to say that in Germany, this swastika had some strange meaning, Gnostic meaning, the Gnostics, hey, they believed that Jesus Christ was not the son of God and he was the messenger of God. Whoa. Fomenko points this out. I'm pointing it out. It does not mean that I'm trying to support modern Islam. Modern Islam is full of fake concepts. Right. Fake it's like ideas. Westboro Baptist I'm, Church. I'm talking Everything about Quranic today is... Islam based <laughs> yeah. on the Quran, original. the original text. Yes. Yeah. So you talked about the Qumran document before and the original... The Qumran docu documents, they're forgeries. Yeah, These are just forgeries. It's like um, um, political forgeries that were made recently. But anyway, go back to that cubic because this is scary. What I've sent you, these documents from the Middle Ages, like here, have a look at these walls mm. of these so-called cathedrals today that, um, that were originally mosques that they took over in France and Italy. Just have a look at this building. They, they destroyed many of these cathedrals and modified them. But here's one, a place that they still haven't modified. I, I sent you a picture. Have a look at that. And it will make you wonder. What's the, the future world is Kufic. Five, 600 years ago? Well, the Matrix, they had the Animatrix series, and they talk about Iraq as being the center of a new, there's like a place south of Baghdad that's going to be the new city of the AI called Zero One. And it's interesting just looking at this. Yeah, AI Kufa. is 1919. Yeah. Uh, a is number one, and, and I is number nine. <laughs> yeah, and if you have a cube, when you do the masonry of languages, it's normally on a grid with um, nine squares. Yes? nine squares one to nine and you could put alphabets in and you, you can compare languages and the masonry of languages and you will find a lot of modern languages are fake but anyway going back to this cubic this language that the quran originally came in is amazing it's a digital language now as you'll notice in that picture that i've sent you the central decoration is is the original language of the quran it's cubic 
Around it is the is the handwriting, modern Arabic. The and carnation that was just style, decoration. right? Was decoration. So now the strange thing is, what is the Quran? Let me send you what, a, is the, a, what is the outer ring? Okay, so really quickly, because I'm looking at this, I've seen the Kufic in the center, the door's Kufic, and above it's Kufic, and the outline is, there's a ring, there's a frame of car, of the Karmatian script, which is the kind of whimsical stuff, and then what's the yeah. stuff on the outer line? That looks like almost Sanskrit. Now, the outer line is, I'll give you an example, Do you, like today, we've started using QR codes. Yeah. Many people can read them. You can study the language itself. Right. It's based on gematria. Now, the thing is, most people are now when I write a book, I'll type it out. But 20 years ago in university, we used to um, type it and um, write it with our own hands. So now writing, many young children don't even learn how to write in many countries. They, they just start learning how to type. Their parents buy, the, buy them a keypad. Right. Yes. So now many people can't write. So what happened is when you look at that and you look at all the old Arabic books, look, look at look at these. Oh, this yeah. is the Quran. Types. The Types. Quran is a digital language. We don't know who this Maha Ahmed or Muhammad or the Prophet Muhammad, we don't know who he was. We don't know what this book is. The Quran was originally in this digital language called Cubic. And then when the Inquisition started to burn these books, in the 15th, 16th, 17th century, the Muslims mysteriously ran into the deserts. They ran out of um, urban areas and, and um, civilized Europe and other places, and they ran to the deserts and the mountain regions in the Balkans, wherever they survived. Yes, and then the wars continued up, all the way up to the 1940s, 50s. And that's why they're continuing the wars in the desert regions now. And these people memorize this book, and today they write it in their handwriting. Modern Arabic is just a handwriting. It's like um, out of desperation. But the Quran came in that format. Kubik. Have a look at it. This is Kufic. What the hell is this? The Quran is. When, you, when, when we start to look at this book with its um, gamatria in a three-dimensional format in Kubic, and in, it's a QR code language. It's, 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 it's insane. I don't know what to say what it is. So This book is an advanced book. So it's what like, do you think I'm happened then? Like we, we have all these stories about, by the way, it's interesting because it's, it's socially acceptable to believe that everything is really, really ancient. You can believe the pyramids are 20,000 years old if you want to. But when you start <laughs> saying that things are new, it offends everybody. And it sounds like this is why. What do you think the religion, What? because it seems like this comes down to there's two kinds of beliefs here. There's this humanism thing that was going on. That's, and then there's this digital takeover. Is that right? Or what do you think that... The dynamic right. is now. Now, the many things most people who've had a look into so-called world history call it the kingdom of God, call it Tataria, call it Mongolia, call it um, caliphates, call it Russia, call it whatever you want. There was a global civilization, and it was advanced. And the thing is, if they were advanced, they had an advanced writing system. I've just sent you that advanced writing system. It's cubic, and it's in Arabic. That was the advanced writing system. Now, the thing is, somebody destroyed the old world order, which is called the Old Testament or the old law. And then they wanted the New Testament and the new law, which means you don't have to follow the old law anymore. And you can make your own laws. And then um, the people in power make these laws. Yes. And what they did was they destroyed everything and they hid the technology. We're not discovering anything. They're bringing things out. It's like... Um, it's like um, I sent you um, photographs before that I've met um, people in big technology companies in Japan, in America, in other places. I've been to many factories where they produce technology. And the thing is, and many offices, and the thing is, we're not, re we're not rediscovering or anything. The thing is, they're slowly bring bringing the technology out and company workers are just adapting to technology and they're just making sure that technology, we can use it. That's all we're doing. The people in power hid the technology. And that's why we're seeing that many places were destroyed. These fake wars happened, everything to wipe out the history. That's what we've seen. Paris mysteriously looks like a, a ghost city, deserted, destroyed. Six million people are underground. And they're saying everybody forgot about these graves until the 19th century, that six million people are buried under the city. Rome is a smaller city than Paris. So under, under Rome, they're saying there's half a million people buried there or oh, people forgot these places. It's just a lie. They took over Europe. 
They killed uh, many of these people. They gave them names like heretics, Gnostics, other names, Inquisitions, whatever. And they took over saying 30 years war, this war, that war, and Protestant wars. They give them strange names like Protestants, this, that, half this history. We can't even verify it. It sounds like a joke. Yes, but within the fake history that they've written, they made mistakes. Like, for example, they showed the invasion of Vienna in the when they say the Turks made their first invasion in the in the 16th century and the seven, second one in 1683 in the 17th century. And um, the first invasion, yeah, Anatoly Fomenko pointed out that the Jesuits and the Catholic Church wrote this history, but mysteriously they've got the Ottoman army marching to with flags with crosses. So that means they wrote, wrote it, but in their diagram that they did, because they did the, these um, pictures in these um, manuscripts, they forgot to change that into stars and moons. But the Ottoman army came with stars and crosses like the Knights Templar. So the symbol of, this, uh, of um, the crosses was something else. Yes. So And then they're showing um, you, uh, there's medieval um, manuscripts, which are alleged medieval, but it looks more like they're the Renaissance. They've got the Christians with Arabic writing in the background with their moons and stars. So the history doesn't make sense. Then the invasion of 1683, yeah, there's a so-called plague in Europe in, in the 1680s, yeah? And um, the thing is the Holy Roman emperors and, and the Pope himself and others were known to drink blood, human blood, yeah? They're known to drink it and they called it medicine. You know, like people who are saying, I drink Red Bull for health, yeah? So these people were drinking blood for health regularly and um, they're telling us that all these people were mysteriously dying and then the people who protested against the church they've made a fake history of protestantism these many people ran to istanbul a big city and the, and they were saying we're begging you come and help so then the turks and the russians they come fomenko pointed out the russian army also came and uh, uh, other people because in moscow at the time we look at these russian kings who've got arabic verses of the quran on their helmets right which doesn't make sense and then and then uh, the russian army yeah has got arabic writing on their swords that um, invades europe and they're telling us that they are so-called son of god believers and things like this and then under saint stephen's dome cathedral and other churches there's thousands of bones in vienna what the hell were they doing so inside these they, churches? How Russian were they? They weren't just Chechnyans. They were like from St. Petersburg. No, ah, nobody is talking about the Chechnyans. I've been to the Caucasus region, Kapkaz, Caucasus, or whatever they want to call it. Most people have never been there and they talk about that region. Now, for example, if you come to America, you'll notice that, that there's people from the Balkans and the Middle East who look a little darker compared to the um, Scandinavians and the Germanic people. Now, in the, in, in the Caucasus region, what is so strange? Yeah, for example, I'll, I've been to Novi Bazar and you're from that region. Then you will know I'm not lying. I'll describe the Caucasus. Now, when I went to the Caucasus, I thought, what the hell is going on? These Chechens don't mix with the other locals. They're tall, they're bigger, and they've got blonder hair and redder hair. So I know that they migrated south. That's why uh, um, they migrated south. And they're fighting to defend the Quran, and they say, we came south, we came from Germany and Scandinavia. We retreated after the 18th century. Yes. And they are mysteriously Muslim, and they're Northern Europeans. And now if you go to Novi Bazar, Novi Bazar is different from Nish. Nish, yes, in Serbia. Now, when I went to Nish, I noticed the people were not as tall as the people in Novi Bazar. And I noticed that the Novi Bazar people were taller and there was more people who had, had the ratio and tendency to have blonder hair or fair hair. So, and, th and those people, they say, we went to the mountains, we retreated from Germany. And they say they only came in the last 200 years. Yes. Same like the Bulgarians. Many Bulgarians are taller and, and everybody is giving this fake history that the Russians invaded the Balkans fighting the Ottoman Empire. But many of these Bulgarians who retreated into Bulgaria, the Russians came after them. They came after them, the Russian Romanovs, yeah, and the Holy Roman Empire, Holy Roman Habsburgs, they seized the actual um, Tartaria or Moscow. And when they seized it, they, they put the fake Romanovs in power. And then what happened with the fake Romanovs from St. Petersburg, they made a law in the 18th century. Every book, 
in Northern Europe must be surrendered. And they sent out their similar inquisitions and they got hold of all these Arabic books and they changed all the coins or, or the Russian or the Russian currency was a dirham. It was in, in, in Arabic also, which doesn't make sense, but um, it doesn't make sense with the official history. So there you have it. It's like um, why the Scandinavian type of people in the Caucasus and in the Balkans. Whereas when you go to Azerbaijan next door, you will see, hey, they've got Middle Eastern features. Armenians have got more Middle Eastern features. But um, Chechnya? No. Dagestan is mixed between Northern European, mixed with the Southern European. They've mixed together more. And the Chechnyans, they're more in the mountains. So they didn't mix together. And that's why they can fight in Northern Europe. And every, that's why, because they've still got, they've got the biology of Northern Europeans who tend to be bigger compared to Southern Europeans, which many people know. It was more difficult for the Southern divisions of the, of the Russian army to fight these people because the Southern divisions had local recruits who were much shorter and everybody feared these Chechens. Yeah, because they, they knew they were taller, they were bigger. It's not because they were more crazy or anything, they were bigger, yeah? So obviously if you're shorter in height, you're going to fear somebody who's bigger. But it is a serious question. What are these Scandinavian and Germanic type of people doing over there? When did they go there? Now they're gonna give you some fake history that doesn't make sense. In the, in the same way that we've got um, people who are Scandinavian type of people or people from Poland, Polish blood, as far as, far as Kashmir, Pakistan and um, Western China. That, that nobody seems to explain Polish blood and um, German blood being in Afghanistan. What about, you so in terms of I the goddess, in, in terms of like chauvinism in the goddess, because you look at Chechnya and you look at a lot of people's ideas of every religion really is as a, you know, paternal, paternal religion. But so many of these areas, we look at at least what we're told about their history is that they worshipped a lot or a knew it or, you know, these God, for instance, Hathor, which H and K like Cathars, like the Hathor is the God, sky deity and the mother sky, the consort of Horus. Right. So, so many of these feminine archetypes, uh, is it, and also I know like in, in, Ar in okay. Arabic, they've used okay. Sufi, Sophia. Is there okay. a feminine now the, aspect? Now the, thing is, now the thing is, I mentioned Hathor in my book called the matrix. Yeah. Now, the thing is, ancient Egypt, Egypt is not ancient. It's from the Middle Ages, 14th, right. 15th, 16th century. Now, when now the thing is, if you look at many of these Egyptian words and you compare them to Latin and 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 the Egyptian rites of religion, mummification, Catholic mummification, then you soon you will soon see it's the same civilization. Yes, Anatoly Fomenko pointed that out. I pointed that out in my book called The Matrix. Yeah. So and the then, Catholics, um, did they kill off a bunch of people and then force that style of, I mean, is that... Right, the thing is, in, in the book Skull, Skulls and Bones, now the thing is, um, in the book Skulls and Bones, what I've done, I've given an example of, of 20 churches so that people can go, can go and do the research themselves. Of 20 churches with underground underground dungeons, basements, thousands of skulls and bones. Now, when you see it, you're going to think, oh my God, this is a joke. They're in the basements of churches and people upstairs are praying. Skulls and bones. Now, the thing is, when you're saying, do I think that they wiped out a civilization? Let me just send you a few examples. Uh, yeah. Normally, the thing is, it's because I don't keep this stuff. But, well, um, but, but also it, in terms uh, of the femininity, I'm curious, like, because is it is it that they worshipped yes. a feminine aspect or that they're trying to push a okay, goddess okay, cult now? Okay, now the thing is, it's got it, now when people say something to do with worship. Right. Now, why do people drink a drink like Red Bull? Why <laughs> do they mix it with, um, let's say, vodka with um, Red Bull or things like that? Why would people? Why would somebody do that? Because it's there, or because they want energy. Because the Red Bull gives the energy once you've drank the red vodka, so that you could dance away. Yeah, yeah. that's what most of my mates do yeah. <laughs> when they when they go clubbing. Yeah, they say, "Hey, um, it's just the extra boost." Yeah. So now the thing is, what what happened is, I will give you an example. Imagine if you're killing people, and you're burning people, and you're cooking them, 
yeah, to eat their meat. And you're um, killing kids, um, saying that kids have got blood. And then that blood, because when a ki kid cuts his hand or something, or he fell, falls and hurts his knees, he, his, his um, skin recovers faster compared to somebody who's 60 or 70. Because the blood is different. It's younger. So now imagine if you and your mates and your friends are going out there and you're drinking blood every day and you're killing people. Now, the thing is, imagine you're growing weaker. Because now you've got people, the people who mysteriously, there's a guy called Muhammad or the prophet Muhammad who came. Yeah. And his boys are coming saying, motherfuckers, we're going to chop you up. Or I don't want to swear saying, hey, we're going to get them. And they're invading Vienna. And now they're mysteriously, they're, they're millions of people are following them all over Europe. And, you're, and what are you going to do? You're going to hide their history. You're going to call them Gnostics, devil worshippers, this, that, dual gods, that they had two gods. And then you're going to change history and you're going to say, ah, oh, they did these rituals. They had these female goddesses, everything. You're going to hide everything. This is what they did in history. Now, this is what my book, new book, Skulls and Bones shows. And um, because I didn't save the pictures on my computer, unfortunately, I'll have to send you bad quality pictures. But unfortunately, it's bad But um, because these are um, actual photographs for the book. And it's because I don't want to infringe copyright. You know what these people are like because they don't want the message to get out there. Let me send you a few of these. Now, I'm sending you a few churches, showing you what's in their basements. Now, when you see this, you are going to think, what the hell? In their basements, or some of them, they use it as decorations. But in most churches, it's in their basements. Right. You, I've been to a number um, of churches in Europe that have skull art and, skull, and skeletons. No, not a number. Just built up. I'm talking about millions. Yeah. I mean, like a whole church Maybe. built the entire front cathedral just built of a hundred dead people, at least I've seen. But underground, yes. also Leon, there's the uh, crypts. I'm talking about in basements. Now, one thing is for somebody to take these bones into the basements, why would you take them there? What are you doing? Are you eating the bones? Did you eat the people? Why did you keep bones? What the hell is going on? Now, the thing is, I'm sending you a few. Now, when you see this, now, because many people found these things in the last 50 years, what they've done is the Vatican that controls these churches has decorated the bones to put them a bit more neatly. But actually, the bones are in a mess, like piled up almost like that you're somebody who's messy and dirty and you, like a dog or a cat eating going through garbage, and then you just dump the bones. So that's how the bones were found. For example, in Stephen's Cathedral, in many, many places, like and there's just thousands of bones under the Cathedral of Vienna. And they were fighting about that. And they're saying the Muslims, the Russians and everybody else invaded. Yeah. Um, because, and then the King of Poland, Jan Sabiowski, he came to save Europe from Muslim invasion. Go and look at all his churches in Poland, all these skulls and bones in basements. What the hell were these people doing? I sent you a few pictures. Have you found yeah, them? Yeah, it's terrifying. Yeah, just hundreds, of, each, each just wall of skulls, just collaged and yeah. mosaic. Well, those things, they put them as decorations in the 19th century. Is because in the 19th century, what happened is many people, as people found them, let's say if I go into my local church, I'm going to find them. They're going to say, oh, we didn't know that was here. There was no room to bury these bones. So then they'll just make it into a decoration. They've turned it into a decoration oh to hide God. it. To hide it. Or actually, when the bones were discovered, they were actually found as a mess. You know, same like when you see a dog going through a pile of garbage, eating through the things, bones of all the meat. Actually, what uh, I've, said, I've, said, I've sent you more than 10 pictures now. You should have had them. So this is the thing people are talking about, these free energy. Now, um, the thing is, they decorated these places to actually hide it. And they're saying, no, people came here to pray. But now, for example, if they're going to say people came here to play, for example, the Sedlec Cathedral in Bohemia is known as the Church of Skulls. Now, the strange thing is, inside that place, there's, there's um, 70,000 skulls and bones, of 70,000 people's skulls and bones um, there. Well, we've got a problem. The population of that place in the year 1700 was only 2,000 people. How the hell can you have 70,000 bones from the 17th century when only 2,000 people live there? Have you received the pictures? Have a look through the pictures. Right, yeah. It's have crazy. Just I, um, all just these look, bodies and then just piles. Look. Actually, this one that's the scariest is just, you're right, like in the basement, just piles of bones. Like, it's lumber. Just tied together. Have a look newspapers. at the pictures I've, I've given you. Now, uh, um, have you... Uh, 
uh, and please take a look. I've sent you a few pictures. Yeah, the and wall of see... the wall of skulls, terrifying. And yeah, and these guys are supposed to save us. Interesting, and it is interesting, have like the idea that the Facebook, these, Facebook they... messages. Yeah, I sent yeah. you many pictures. Yeah. yeah. Now the thing is, what people think is today they made them a bit neat. It seemed like you and me walking into a place we found a mess. So actually, they these bones were found in a mess. A mess. It seemed like garbage. So now they put them a bit neater because you and me, we're going to complain. You and me, we're going to say, what the hell are they doing here? So then they're saying, no, people came to meditate here. They're lying. <laughs> it's because, for example, there was a cathedral. I forgot which one. The um, ordinary U.S. soldiers found it after World War II in um, Austria. But the thing is, they tried to keep it a secret. But so many local people came saying, what the fuck? Or what the hell is this? They went crazy saying, what are all these um, bonds doing here? Yeah. Uh, and uh, it's like um, at the time, there were bishops and priests. The U.S. Army had to protect them. Yeah. And there were pra practically people were, uh, were saying, what the hell are these things doing here? There was a big outrage. So they, they wouldn't have reported it. But then in the end, they reported it. The U.S. Army found it. Yeah, they were looking for they were looking for something, and it was behind a hidden basement under a church in, in Vienna. So uh, I'm, I think that is actually St Stephen's Cathedral, but I forgot which one. It's in my book. Um, I've forgotten off off the top of my head. Yeah. Wow. So the thing is, we're we're not talking about a few. We're talking there's millions of bones like this underground in Europe, piled up skulls and bones. Millions. I, I'm not talking about a few. I'm talking about millions. You see. Yeah, millions of bones. This, so, have you actually received the pictures? Yeah, yeah, um, I'm looking life? at them now. I'm just going through all of them, and it's just yeah. walls of bones, just crazy amounts. I've seen a yeah. lot I, of the these in the past, and they've said they said the Great Wall of China has bones in it, and everyone talks about the amount of people that died in uh, yeah the dark. They have all these excuses yeah. for this, but this is. Yeah, you know, definitely. Now, when you look now at the it, thing this is, is what they're trying to death. say it's the Dark Ages. Now, in my book, I pointed out that actually these bones were gathered together in the 16th and 17th century, mysteriously at the same time as the so called Muslim Turkish invasion of Vienna in 1683. That mm. these people were doing this, and then you can check it, they can't hide this information because the Muslims kept records. Yeah, but nobody wants to read the Muslim records. Okay, we can go to the Smithsonian. Yeah, the Smithsonian, they couldn't hide it. Um, it's because there's too many records that ordinary people wrote, yeah, that these people were killing people in the 16th, 17th century. And they were eating their meat. They were burning people in inquisitions. They were co cooking them. They were eating them. That's what the inquisitions were about. But in history, they wrote down they were Gnostics, they were heretics. The truth is, it's like you and me, we want, we want to have a meal and um, forget um, a chicken sandwich from KFC. Yeah, let's, let's bring those men from over there and we're going to cook them. Wow. That's what they were doing. Yeah. <coughs> I just sent it you. I just sent you a new page, the Kings of England. They've modified the names of these kings and popes. But the thing is, it's known. They were drinking blood. Have a look at it. Eating human remains for religious or medicine purposes. I could say Red Bull is like for a medicine purpose. Wow, it's medical, not yeah. It says, okay, I'm going to read it for everybody. It says, despite the, these insistent denials, the practice of eating human remains for religious or medicinal purposes was extremely prevalent in medieval and early modern European culture. It was studied by the Swiss physician Paracelsus. Yeah. Is that right? Yeah, the what Process. they've done is they added that bit on for you to think it's medicine. It's not medicine. And other well-respected medical professionals people. and used not only by the yeah, average gentryman, really used by the average gentryman who could afford medical care, but by kings such as it's Charles II care. of You're England. You're there having a glass of blood. Come and on. Pope yeah. Innocent you Call that medicine? The, ideo the ideology behind this practice was said to be the influence by the healing properties of the Eucharist. In fact, the general consensus seems to be that medicinal cannibalism was supported by the same ideas that supported the Eucharist. The human flesh contained healing powers, and the most effective way yeah. to access those powers was by eating those which contained them. That's Yeah, what they mean by healing powers is that blood is alive. So they normally drank the blood when it's alive. But the thing is, they're just saying it's medicine. It's not medicine. You're eating people. You're having a pint of blood. 
you're eating someone's leg. Now, the thing is, let me show you the sources of these things. I'm sending you the sources, then you can check it. These are from even the so-called elite media can't deny it. I've sent you the Smithsonian, many of the other places, sources that you can, you can check through it. So this is what these people were doing. And um, you can have a look that it reached its height in the 16th and 17th century when the so-called mega big um, Turkish invasions happened in the 16th and 17th century or Muslim invasions of Europe. Because in Muslim records, you can go to Istanbul and other places, the Muslims have kept the tradition saying, these people, the Vatican and its boys, they were going around in their inquisitions, they're burning people, they were eating them. They were eating them, they're just drinking the blood. That's what they were having as a drink. This is what they were doing. And then the people were coming, many um, people were so-called Protestants or Gnostics, yeah, who came and said, we refuse to accept Christ as the Son of God, or we refuse to accept the, uh, this and that. And they're using it as an excuse. They're actually eating us. We are the food. And that's why when you think about a global agenda for 2030, for um, vaccines, that everybody should be protected against 20 diseases, on average 10 or 20 vaccines, they're purifying everybody's blood right now. Right. They talk oh, about vaccine as the Latin root vacus. Purifying your blood. Well, Same vac like an animal. Vacus, vacus means cattle. So they're, they're making yes. us all cattle. Yes. And the thing is, have a look. I've sent you the sources so that you can check it. Smithsonian and other things. Have a look. That they're just eating these um, dead bodies, everything. Who did it? The royalty, the priests, scientists, um, whoever, all these people. It's like um, the average middle, upper class. They're just eating people. They're eating people. Yeah, and it's, it's the, interesting. And, um, it's, thing, it's stated as uh, acceptable for the average gentryman. But not the way they say it is it's not just the average gentryman, also the royals. It's interesting. Not just to say, not just the royals, but average vote too would make more sense to me. Because yeah, of course royals The average free person. 80% of the people were not free. They were peasants. You got to remember, yeah. like you had to live on the land and be their slaves. And then all you did was eat. You grew bigger. And as, as it says there, young men were their favorites to eat and young women. Right. drinking their blood yeah. charles the second it's amazing you think about uh, the libertine period and you know and the thing is Rochester. this is not so long ago the vampires. 17th century is three, yeah 300 300 years ago it, this is not about vampires we're talking about this is what these people were doing until the ottoman turkish invasion 1683 and uh, and the thing is the holy roman emperor i've forgotten his name yet he ran like a dog you, they were they were eating people, and what have they got down in history? They were the savers of Christianity. Savers of what Christianity? These people, they called it the Eucharist. They were actually drinking blood. Wow. And and the thing is, nobody you can even check it. And then if the Muslims speak up, ah, uh, the Smithsonian isn't Muslim, or the these records that they even wrote it down saying, hey, we had a pint of blood today. We killed a few of these villagers here. I uh, he was a agnostic. He was a Protestant. Yes. Blood sausage is still thought, very yeah. popular in Spain. Yeah. Uh, uh, and the thing is, then they switched to pork because pork tastes like humans. <laughs> yes. Or pork, pork was, not, was not widespread. If you check before the year 1900, they, can't give, they cannot give a proper story why Germany had hardly any pigs for consumption. Yeah. Yes. And what they will say is that mysteriously, we don't know from where, but the British Empire and the, and the Dutch Empire were supplying Germany with pork for the common villagers oh. or the villagers didn't eat pork. Then they say that all, all these pigs, they died in so-called wars between Germany and France in the 1870s. But the French army never even entered German soil uh, or basically on German territory. So how could German pigs have died? It means that pig was not part of the diet. And that's why when you look at the people in photographs or videos from 100 years ago, they're not that big. They're not that fat. Yeah. And now people are growing overweight. It's becoming a joke because of what they're eating. But the thing is, as I've shown, these things are all in my books. Um, the book, Jesus Christ, it goes through more about Christianity and skulls and bones will go through it more. So as you've noticed, my books have become, <laughs> I hope they're amazing now. They're absolutely amazing. I can't wait to see, yeah. read the Skull and Bone book. I appreciate yeah, I'll, I'll send you.
Yeah, I'll send you a few of the, the the books for the background of this skull and bones. Thank because you. Because you won't be able to understand it without the background. Now, the, now the thing is, my books are easy. Anatoly Fomenko goes through this in a lot more depth. He goes through it in much deep in much deeper things. But now, as you can see, the history of the Balkans, because you are from there, Serbia, and um, the history of Croatia, Saint Stephen, the so-called savior of Serbia. All this history is a lie. All this history, they made it up, yes? They made it up to show the fake so-called Turkish invasion. Can you imagine going to Istanbul today, trying to raise an army and tell people, please come over to Germany to help the Germans. Vienna is the gateway. Get rid of these people. They're, they're drinking people's blood. They're cooking us, man. <laughs> they're cooking us, yo. Right. And then you know, it's interesting. Happened. The Soviet Union had to make these posters to tell people not to eat children. That it was is wrong to eat your children. And I mean, and and now in the modern world, one many people don't have a look. For example, Bulgaria. Now, if you look at European Union records after Bulgaria entered the European Union, they have records for nine hundred thousand or around a million people from Bulgaria came to Europe. But Bulgaria has got a record that minimum 15% of its population has left the country. Minimum. And uh, if you go there yourself, you'll notice that probably more than 15% of the country is left because they've entered the EU that they can go and work there. There's millions of people that are disappearing all the time so, from so-called migrants, so, um, from war zones, that nobody seems to know where they've gone. You can, I spoke to somebody in Tunisia several months ago. Their brother went to Europe, these so-called migrants, and disappeared. And they think their brother's working and happy. These stories are common. Millions of people are disappearing, which just doesn't make sense. Even 20, 30 years ago, in America, they said um, 38 or 38 percent of children that went missing um, never came back. They never found them. Now they say over 80 percent are found. Yeah. So the thing is, the, the data doesn't even make sense. But we're talking about Thousands of people are disappearing in so-called border migrations. And then Europe's population, mysteriously, even with so-called millions of Polish who came in the last 30 years, Czech Republic, Slovakia, Hungary, Romania, Bulgaria, Greek, all of them went to work in Western Europe, and I live in England. And in England, the population doesn't seem to be going up that much. England, France, and Germany. In fact, the population is going down. And not just them, they're bringing so many refugees from Libya that included bogus refugees that came from many African countries and from Afghanistan and Iraq and Syria. They brought millions of people and still Europe's population is going down. Isn't this suspicious? Millions of migrants you can see in America. And then you think, where are all the local people in America? Where are they going? All these people from South and Latin America and coming in from other places. Yeah, the, the maths just doesn't add up. And the, and the drinking blood? Who said this process stopped? Who said they stopped it? I'll give you an example now. Imagine if you're 60 years old. And if you start drinking the blood of children four or five years old, that blood has growth in it. The blood cells have growth. They grow. If you keep drinking it for one year and your body is 60 or 70 years old, what will happen to your body? Your body will become young again. Yes, that's a fact. So how long, how old are some of these people? If they've been drinking blood for centuries, who said they died? Well, some some interesting yeah, characters like Edward Kelly and John D working on the Philosopher's Stone, talking about not just making gold, but the the sacrificial power or atonement necessary to make a Philosopher's Stone. Yeah, and what does the New Testament say? Without blood sacrifice, there is no forgiveness. Yes, who wrote these things? And then the Old Testament was written later. It says the same thing. Now, the, the strangest thing is now, anybody who's going to, now, there's going to be many people. That's why I recommend my books for the full story. They're going to say that, ah, oh, they found no room in these cemeteries. So that's why they just dump the skulls and bones in, in basements. Imagine dumping your dad in a basement, chop his skulls and bones up. Then they're saying, for example, there's a skull and bones church in northern Italy. And then they're saying there was a war here in 1880, a battle. And the soldiers who died, we kept put their skulls and their bones here to remember everything inside the church, 1880s. Now, for them to do that, soldiers who died, they had their clothes on 
and everything. The battle was only a few days. What they did is they must have burnt the meat, took out their tongues and their brain and all the meat from inside their skulls, washed everything, and they must have burnt the meat off the bones. Or you can't take take the meat off the bones very easily. Just to put them in that museum. Is this what? And you believe this history? Yes. People believe it. It's outrageous. People believe this. So it doesn't make sense. So some of these characters. So I was looking at that time, like Charles the Second, Queen Elizabeth. You've got John Dee and Ed Kelly, and they're involved with the Voynich Manuscript, at least allegedly, and this kind of changing of history in the 1700s. They they would have been prime candidates for this. Do you think that they were? Do you think that the British court was trying to introduce this or keep this secret? Or now, what's... now the thing is. Now the strange thing is, if you look at the history of England, England was invaded from Holland in the 17th century, 1688, by a man called William of Orange. The history sounds like it's bogus. Now in England, mysteriously, there's lots of churches and cathedrals in the countryside that have been destroyed. So whoever took over the churches, yes, whoever took over the churches changed their function. Now, if anybody wants to understand the true function of churches, now, as I said, they said that there's all these skulls and bones in basements of churches, and they're claiming we couldn't find no place to bury these people. The cities got overcrowded. But many of these places, you could check the population in the 17th century, there's hardly anybody there. So that means the history is a lie. And then let's go to Muslim cities now. Mysteriously, the Muslims found more room to bury the dead and there's uh, millions of Muslims, but in Europe, they didn't find it. Or somebody's going to say, ah, but there's more Christians. No, Latin America is Christian recently. Take away the Latin Americans, then there's more Muslims. And take away the atheists, it means there's more Muslims anyway. Yeah, but forget that. This is not about numbers. Now, the thing is, why can the Muslims find places to bury the people and they didn't dump skulls and bones? And then um, let me just um, give you that Italian one. This this will make you um, actually very suspicious that, uh, that they took out the brains from the skull. Let me tell you which church is this. San Marino della Battaglia, Church of Santa, San Martino della Battaglia de Senzano del Garda in Italy. This place is decorated with skulls and bones. Decorations, yeah? And um, the thing is, they say that this is from the Battle of Solferino, Napoleon III, 1859. Instead of burying the dead bodies, I'm telling you now, imagine right now, right? Instead of burying people, I'm cutting open your leg, taking the blood off, everything in the meat off, taking the bone out. I'm removing your tongue, your cheeks. I'm cutting everything up until I've totally taken out the skull just to put it inside the church as a museum. This is what they're telling us. People, people just go there and they think, oh, it's so sad. These are the bones, so sad, the bad all happened. Nobody's imagining that they're telling us that the church came along, took out, took out the blood and took off the meat. Now, another thing is World War I, um, the Battle of the Bulge. Yeah, it was the worst battle. Was it the Bulge? I've forgotten the name of the battle. I think it was. Yeah, I th I th yeah, I I've forgotten the name. Now, they've got, that, um, they've got this memorial for it, a big church in France. Now, they buried half the bodies, but the other half of the bodies, check this out. They were taking the bodies. They took the uniforms off. They took the hats off. They removed the meat mysteriously, and they've kept the skulls and the bones in the basement of that memorial, which doesn't make sense. Does that make sense to you? How the hell could you take the uniforms off and everything's off and... They can't say stray dogs, stray pigs came to eat these dead bodies because what happened is in the trenches, the soldiers were being replaced. If somebody died, they took their body away. They were burying as many as they can, but mysteriously, thousands of them were not buried, but we've just got their skulls and bones. No, we've, we've seen gone and everything's the gone trench on. wars, World War One, just wiping out just so many, like all the every able-bodied young man from yeah. all the villages. Now, now the thing is, the story Wales. behind that yeah, I've written it in a book called Orphan Trains, where I show what was the reason, what they did for the urbanization process after, after, after the Ottoman invasion of Europe in the 17th century. Something happened that the people changed their policy because Anatoly Fomenko shows that when the invasions of Vienna happened, they turn around and say that Russia that came with the Ottomans actually lost. But the truth is they actually won. 
that the world order was on the retreat. That's why they after the 17th century, the drinking of blood and everything slowly disappeared. That by the by the time cameras, open cameras came and television, it went underground after the 19th century. That doesn't mean it's gone. Who said they stopped? There is no evidence they stopped. Whoever these people were mysteriously stopping their diet, drinking blood and eating um, human meat. Who said that stopped? They're telling us it stopped. And there's millions of people disappearing. And then nobody can explain World War I, yes, that somebody just, just um, had shrapnel on his shoulder. And then the rest of his body, they took his clothes off and everything off and the rest of the meat just to get his bones. It just doesn't make sense that they piled up the bones there and then they put it in that memorial and half the bodies are buried. It doesn't make sense. And if they're going to say oh, there were so many people dying in this battlefield, what about in the battlefields in, on the Muslim territories? Mysteriously, the Muslims managed to bury every single one. Yeah. And then there was so, uh, uh, they had so many soldiers. After the war, they could have buried every single one. But no. They decided to keep the skulls and the bones and they put it in this memorial. I've forgotten the name that you can go and see. Not all the bones, but quite a lot of them. It doesn't make sense. Yeah. It is interesting so, also like guess, looking at how England was transformed. The language was replaced. You, you can see Frisian has gone. The new Gaulish French words that are introduced. And like Greenwich and everything. There's still the fact that their names of places are still... When you read them, you can't pronounce them in English. You have to pronounce them in British because they come from the old language. All of England. Yes. Yeah, they've changed all the history, unfortunately. Now, now, Andreas, let's leave it at that. I'm sure you've got enough things. Yeah, now, thing I was going to say I'll thank you. It's been, a, it's been a whirlwind. This is a good yeah. one. I appreciate yeah. the time um, you took to talk um, to me. You, you should don't... definitely plug your books more. I think people need to find yeah. them. Yeah, the books, the books, I've, I've got them under Tataria by David Ewing Jr. Yeah, and there's some books that are circulating online that people have got them in, in PDF form. Now, those books were the originals that I gave out to people free. Those, many of these books had mistakes in spelling and they've been updated. The ones that are published are the ones that have been updated with more information. It's because the ones that I give out free before was actually because I'm checking what people say, what information to keep, what not to keep, what's necessary. Like, for example, if I'm talking about churches, people will recommend to me and say, hey, you forgot this point. Uh, this point is too common. Everybody knows it anyway. You don't need this, so remove that. Yeah, then um, you can put extra information in the book because when you publish a book, you don't want too many pages. Yeah. So the thing is, I sent you books before. The thing is, I'll send you the new links now for the for um, all the 15 books. There's 15 now, and they're available in 20 languages. By the way, they're in 20 languages now. Can you believe it or more? That's pretty impressive. <laughs> I'm glad that in you're Ser doing this. It's really important. The world needs yeah. to hear this. They're available Everyone's in wondering. Serbian, Polish, uh, Serbian, Polish, many languages. Someone was saying, so, like, why is Tartary such a big thing now? I'm like, well, I think part of the reason is you're putting these books out and people are finding them. Because I know a lot of my friends have found a Ewing Jr. book out there. So <laughs> you're doing your work. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, and, and the thing is, the thing is, for example, somebody can read something or look up one video. People shouldn't just base their opinions on one thing. It's like me. I'm always learning. I know I don't know everything. So I've got to learn more things. Yeah. yeah I like how so your books are showing have to learn more things. Your, your books were showing how your approach and study are. The fact that you're showing your Google searches as a site. Yeah, so it's a very easy way to themselves. look through stuff. Yeah, I, I made it so easy instead of somebody just putting something online, not sh uh, making a video, not showing the reference, talking quickly, people don't pause and have a look. Like That's how many videos are made. But the videos do help. But the thing is, people shouldn't just believe without checking. Right. The thing is, that we've, got, we've got a serious problem. And uh, I, it looks like now that um, there may be some organizations, religious organizations, political organizations that are now making fake videos and they've got fake people out there to on purpose mislead people. Yeah, that they've added truth with lies, that they've done this deliberately now. There is a deliberate campaign now because the thing is what people have done now that the, the subject of Tartaria has moved away from actual research. Actual research was by Anatoly Fomenko. 
Then, if you go on Wikipedia and other places, they condemn Anatoly Fomenko as a Russian nationalist. How can he be a Russian nationalist when he is showing that the Quran was the system, or, uh, the system and the and the Quranic language was the main language in Europe and the world, and that religious system was in Russia and Tataria and throughout Europe and the world? Does that sound like a Russian nationalist to you? <laughs> This is what they're saying. So what they've done is they've condemned him, but they don't want to say why they condemned him. Or people are going to think, damn, did he say Arabic? Did he say the Quran? So, so the thing is, this does not mean I'm supporting Islam. I've made it clear that modern Islam has got sects and they've got their ways and their systems and beliefs. Yeah, people follow whatever they want. I'm looking at the Quran as a historical document. Yeah, the This is what I'm looking at. Yeah. Yes. And from what I have found and from what what her mother researchers have found, yeah, they found that the history in that book is totally different than the history that we are being told by nation states all around the world. And, thi and this is the big difference. Now, this is what we found. Now, th that's the bottom line on my position regarding what this what um, religion is and the Quran that I'm showing that I'm my research is based on. On, on research based that I'm questioning, I'm looking for evidence. I'm not willing to go out there and think I'm going to believe this and I follow this. About me personally, do I believe in a God? The sun is moving, the wind is moving, there's forces out there, they exist. There is a creator because they're, they're in a created system. I believe in that creator, simple as. Now, that is the definition of God in the Quran also. So anybody who believes in that definition, means that they're following the same definition of, a, of the Quran. And that means, uh, that means systematically, in the eyes of the Quran, they're classified as Muslims. It means followers of peace. Anyone who believes in peace, who believes in that God who is the creator, who believes that no human is the child of God and that humans are humans, then that person believes in the same religion as Islam. Islam means peace. There you go. And then it says the Messiah, even in the Bible, it says the Messiah will bring shalom all over the world. The word Islam actually is, is salam. Now they have the letter H added on. Islam re removes the uh, Arabic removes the letter H. Now Hebrew is a language that mysteriously people started speaking after the 1880s. And the Israelite alliance colonial schools by the British and the French and the German and Dutch empires yeah, mysteriously found so many orphans in many countries, and they brought them into these Israelite schools and their descendants are now called modern Jewish people who follow Judaism in many places around the world. Actually, that's a long topic. Henry Atzlan, Professor Henry Atzlan goes into it in more depth showing that Judaism came after Islam and came after Christianity, only, only in the last few centuries. Somebody invented it. Oh, he's got videos online as well, Professor Henry Atzlan. I think, um, Many a French institute put, put his lectures on, so you can find it. Anyway, Andreas, let's leave it at that. Yeah? That was beautiful. Thank you so much for taking yeah, the time, David Ewing to you. Jr. It was great talking to you after two years. Oh, my gosh. It's been, yeah. it's been a wild one. I, I appreciate this, though. I hope everyone does a deep dive into this. This was really good. Hey, everybody, tune in to Recent Tartarians. Recent Tartarian Recent Tartarian